Um, so let's talk about tonight's dish. We have, of course, Fancy Fridays. I didn't dress up, I'm sorry. I figured I should be debuting the sweet new year I got, hint, hint, wink, wink, over at the merch. Um, but, <clears throat> We uh, have a amazing treat today. We are gonna be doing fresh venison. So hunting season was last, last week? No, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, and we had a good harvest as a family. Um, you know, uh, food is something that we take for granted, and so every year I have the opportunity to go out and collect my own food, and we do such, and we get our hands dirty. Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough to have a harvest, and I've got some venison tenderloin today. So we're going to be having a, a filet mignon, if you will, of venison. Um, but we are going to do something extra special, extra fancy with that. We are going to do filet mignon uh, venison, and we are going to have that over a nice bed of fried onion. Um, and we are going to dress that with mushrooms and a pomegranate chocolate sauce. This is going to be different, and I don't know how it's going to come together, but uh, the gaminess of venison does pair really well with some sweets, so we're going to try that out, and I found some amazing looking pomegranate today. So we're going to have some fun facts about pomegranates and deer today, um, but our side is going to be a lovely bit of medallion potatoes baked, and we are going to do a... Uh, a tangy horseradish sauce, one of my favorite sauces. If you've watched this stream, you've seen me make this before and it's super delicious and super amazing. Um, and then we are gonna have that with some asparagus as well. So we are in for a treat tonight. Sup bud, Mr. Man Trout, welcome. Appreciate you jumping on in. Uh, we are in for some really good fun. So without further ado, we have got some major prep work to do today. So we're gonna jump right into that. We're gonna hit the new cutting board cam. Uh, we of course change that up for you guys hopefully give you a little better view of what's going on on the old countertop here so of course you can see my magnificent beautiful wood countertop uh, and by countertop I mean cutting board because I'm an idiot and we're gonna get out some of these fun ingredients today so of course we are gonna need asparagus we are gonna need mushrooms we're gonna have to prep those up we are gonna actually do a little carrot as well. Nothing crazy with the carrots. We're just going to add some color to our dish tonight. Ooh la la, very nice Ken. Oh, thank you so much, sir. I don't know if you know this, but uh, it actually made my kitchen a little easier to work with as well by having my camera as such. So you'll also be able to see all of our wonderful ingredients as we sprawl them out for you. Uh, I'm also secondarily working on being a display model here. If you can see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we of course got our uh, mushroom, our asparagus. Um, I also did pick up some, we're gonna need our thyme out for tonight. We are gonna need some garlic, because why not? Um, I need an onion. I've got some potatoes behind me. And of course, my wife hit it on me. There it is. The best of the best. That sweet Kerrygold, Kerrygold butter, pure Irish butter. The deliciousness, the greatness. Um, you know, Bob was in here the other day telling me to try that Tillamook. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a Kerrygold guy. All right, the, the Irishman in me cannot turn away from the Irish butter. Um, and if you haven't had it yet, get in on that. That is some delectable good stuff. Um, so furthermore, I think that empties out our good old veggie side. Now we need our fruit side where we are gonna need some pomegranates. And I think we're pretty good here. Chocolate set aside. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm feeling pretty, pretty solid about this. Hell yeah. And of course, like all good things, cutting board related, we are gonna need our handy dandy knife. So knife wise guys, as we always talk about, um, a knife is personal to you. Get your own favorite knife, whatever you're comfortable working with, unless you're Miss Tiff and wants to use a steak knife on everything. Um, knives really aren't that important on what you do with them, um, as long as they're comfortable in your hands. And that's all that really matters. Uh, so if, as long as it's comfortable in your hand, that's what you're going for. Now we also have never really talked about the toning steel. So a toning steel, um, really, really good for keeping the burrs off your knife. 
Um, so what is knife burring? So fun fact, if you have one of these in your cutting block, you can see this one's kind of ribbed. My dad has one that is a smooth steel. And what it's meant to do is to take any rolled edges of your knife that develop over time and straighten them back out for you. Now you can tell if it's straight or not by when you slowly go across, if you feel a catch. Right? And if you feel that catch anywhere on the knife, that's where you wanna work that. Now, you don't have to be fast. You don't have to be really abrupt with it. You don't have to sit there and shh. -sh -sh. You see some chefs do that. Um, they're well-practiced, so good for them. Um, but you don't need to do that that fast. You can work this thing nice and slow. You just wanna hear that nice, smooth sound and you don't wanna hear any catches. That means that you've got your blade honed on that side and then you wanna return it as well. Now, once again, bad habits never bring that back towards you. This is just the way I've always done it for years. I am cautious when I do this, so not to slice my knuckles open, but otherwise you can always return it back on the underside. And you're just, like I said, making sure you do not hear any of those catches on the steel. And when you don't hear it, that means you have honed your blade really well. You have no catches on either side, and now your blade has been deburred. This will help you keep a nicer blade longer in between sharpening. Um, and I would strongly recommend getting a whetstone. Whetstones are super awesome. Um, you can find instructions on how to use these on YouTube. It's really like, uh, it's so simple to do, it just takes time. Right, this is something where you're watching a good old movie, you sit down, you start massaging your blade on the whetstone. I am very fortunate that my father, the former chef, does this for me because I don't have time with three children all the time. Um, but don't run them through the quick blades. There are some really good mechanical sharpeners out there that you can buy, but if you're gonna go with the quick routes, spend the money on a good one. Don't go to like Walmart or Fleet Farm or the old Kmark um, and try to get one of those quick whippers. Uh, you are only gonna put a bad edge on your blade and then it's gonna dull faster. So either take the time and get a whetstone or spend the money and get a really good quick sharpener. Both will do the trick for you. Always do a toning steel when you're done. And as always, Make sure you wipe it down when you're complete. You are shaving steel. Uh, so even if you're using the honing steels on your knife, make sure you do such. So uh, back to the knife talk, I prefer, I have this really nice uh, Japanese steel cleaver, stainless steel, that's my personal preference. Now that being said, an opportunity to give a shout out here to John Sin. He was one of my first raiders that ever happened on my very first stream. The guy's actually doing a chef knife giveaway. So I've entered, so we may be retiring this cleaver if I win that bad boy or if I can get him to commission me a new cleaver I will be decommissioning the Japanese steel cleaver in which case we might end up giving this bad boy away you know the very first LMC cleaver here and maybe we'll couple it with the original cutting board too I don't know I don't know if you guys want my old stuff either so you know let me know there's a discord for that so let's talk about what we're making tonight we're gonna go ahead and with the onion we are gonna have the onion we're gonna do the onion two ways tonight so we're gonna take and make some very big slices on one, some nice thick hunks. And what we're gonna do is that's gonna be our fried onion under our tenderloin tonight to give us some really good presentability. Uh, the other one we are gonna finely dice and that's gonna go in our chocolate pomegranate sauce and just help add some of that sweetness. Now, some people prefer different onions. I, as I've said many times on this stream, am a huge yellow onion fan. I love me some Vidalia's. I think that they cook up really the nicest. They're super sweet when they cook up. Um, and they're even good raw. So if you don't get them to a complete cook, you end up having a still a sweeter onion. So um, as always, tuck your knuckles when we cook here or when we cut and we'll go ahead and turn that for you. So when you're cutting, don't hold like such, tuck those knuckles and make sure that we get some good cuts. So I'm gonna go with, um, I don't wanna go super thick, but I do wanna get a good chunk of onion here. So we're gonna go about yay. So it's a little thin on one side, a little thinner than I would like. You can see down here, um, I'm thinned up on one side, thicker on the other, but that will be fine. And I do wanna leave these whole discs. Um, I'm gonna try to at least. So let's go ahead and do another one here. And I figured three of these should really do the trick. And as I'm layering them on the plate here or on the cutting board, 
you'll kind of see that's going to be my method for the plating as well is I want these to be nice big flat discs that are going to saute up and we're going to layer them like such and we're going to put our steak right on top of those and I think that's going to look really nice when we're all said and done here. So we've got the rest of our root here and the root that popped out we'll toss you aside of course we keep our nice handy dandy trash bowl back over here and then we're going to get our other side of this one done and we're going to mince this side of the onion. Um, you pen actually you're pretty familiar nowadays with the old uh, the old chat bot here maybe you could type in uh, the old chat command there for all of our, our cuts um, I think it is cuts I don't know um, yeah I'm, I'm losing it slowly but surely so inspiration tonight let's talk about that I've been wanting to do a venison stream since I got the deer this year I thought it'd be a really really cool and interesting thing to cook up because not everyone has a had venison or has access to it um, let alone having fresh venison so uh, I live in the lovely state of Wisconsin it's a beautiful state that allows us to hunt um, multiple months a year but uh, I only go during what is called rifle season so there's three seasons that typically happen well four if you count um the other one bam there you are handsome welcome back i appreciate you you handsome son of a gun uh shout out to bamboozled 95 throw up a shout out for yourself this guy is the absolute champ um putting this stream together with me he's been throwing up commands and putting up the menu all afternoon for me so super big shout out to bam if you haven't had an opportunity to visit his stream he's playing a lot of star citizen lately and if you haven't played star citizen you should it's pretty damn good pretty damn good there he is there he is magnificent magnificent bamboozled so inspiration for this like I said Wisconsin we have multiple hunting seasons so we usually start out the season um, right before or right during the rut so the rut if you're not familiar with deer uh, is the mating season uh, so the bucks get all hot and heavy, the does keep running around, and we end up having ourselves a wonderful time as hunters. If you're an archery hunter, I am not. Uh, I can shoot a bow, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm, I could find a thousand things I would rather do than sit in the woods hunting deer. Uh, so a lot of my friends, my buddies, and coworkers, they go out for weeks and weeks. Um, and I think that first season's usually about a month. And they'll go through and it's all day long, and you can get antlerless or antlered. So even though there are bucks and does, um, in order to be qualified as a buck, you have to have at least one horn or tine coming out of the head that is longer than three inches. I learned that this year because the deer we're cooking today was a buck, but it was classified as antlerless because both horns were actually just, it's called a spiker, one on each one. Uh, one was under three inches, the other one was under two inches, so it classified as antlerless. Um, so I actually left the season with a buck tag still available to me. Um, so you can go through, right? That's what I'm saying. Um, so when you end up harvesting your deer, you end up using your tag and sometimes you can buy more. It all depends. It's all con conservation. So that's the big misconception about hunting, especially when it comes to deer. It's like, oh, you're just killing all these animals. It's actually in the act of trying to maintain the population. Um, they are, I won't say territorial animals because they're definitely not, but they have ranges. And what ends up happening is you end up having these bucks that end up getting very old and during the rut um are not very old they end up having a big claim so to speak um, and as they get older what ends up happening is they have big horns and they they bully around all these younger bucks and these younger bucks uh, essentially have to wait for them to die off to have anything going on and it's it's kind of a thing I guess I don't I'm not a true conservationist uh, you'd have to have, contact the DNR for all the good details but this is kind of my my run-of-the-mill story of how it happens so the act of cons uh, conservation when it comes to deer hunting is really those are some big uh, those those are some open tags than being as the rules being so non-regulated um, those are some open tags then being as the rules being so non-regulated yeah open tags um, there are open tags where you can go through and it's just general harvest right you can harvest a doe or a buck. Um, a lot of times during uh, archery season, they have open, right? And in Wisconsin, I actually found out they actually have combo tags over in Michigan too, which is a totally different thing. Um, 
or they have totally different rules. Uh, and that's, that's the other thing. Every state has totally different rules of conservation. So I'm speaking, uh, I stand tall for regulating a healthy population. I agree with you. I think that it's great because what it helps do is eliminate things like CWD. CWD is a chronic wastings disease. It's essentially mad cow for deer. It's prions get in the brain, cause them all funky stuff, and it's highly infective and it transfers via saliva. Now, the way that we take care of that is by taking out the older deer who end up having um, live past their prime. And what that does is create a young and healthy deer population. Now that deer population, as we're taking care of it, um, the goal is, and this is the goal of every hunter or should be, is to harvest older deer because you're allowing the young immature ones to mature, get bigger, build a better population, and a healthier gene pool. So it's really a very interesting thing when you dive into the conservation of the deer population. Um, and I guess the really the fun part about deer is like the American whitetail. There's actually 26 different subspecies of whitetail deer and 17 of them are in the uh, North American, uh, are in the North American continent. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a cool thing when you dive into it. So back to the other points here. When you're working with all this um, as a hunter, your goal is to take out a older deer. Um, we were very fortunate this year. We did not harvest anything small. And anyone who's ever hunted, it's not exactly like a science either. You try to gauge it. Older deer tend to have um, a, a saggier underbelly and a broader chest and a thicker neck and a shorter snout. Like there's a lot of things you can do to kind of understand where they are. Um, but there's not always, uh, it's not always definitive. It's not like you're looking at it head on or from multiple angles, a lot of times you're taking a shot on a deer that's on the run, so it's very hard to distinguish. Um, so we were very fortunate this year as a family, we took out um, seven deer, all of which were older deer, three years or older. Um, the average that you wanna shoot for is a good, a good age is probably around four or five. If you can get five or older, that's great, but it is uncommon to find most deer that are older than five years old. They've either died of natural causes or they've been harvested by, um, they definitely look old to me right? Um, they, uh, they end up being harvested by wolves or bears or other natural predators, right? So the problem is, is that there's not a ton of natural predators anymore for deer. Um, and it's just because as people, we are the primary, uh, what's the best way to put it? We are the peak of the animal kingdom. And we've taken out a lot of the underbelly of that, of our animal kingdom, the other predators that are out there. Uh, so bear are not as prevalent as they once were. Wolves are not as prevalent as they once were. Um, they're slowly gaining populations, but it's still not something that can put a serious dent in the deer population population like it needs. So back to the seasons, you have archery season that runs through the rut. Usually after archery season, you have what's called a youth hunt in Wisconsin, which allows smaller children to go out for at least a week with a gun and be able to shoot a deer and harvest one for themselves. Now, don't get me wrong, some people abuse this. They'll go get their two-year-old a license and they'll go and sit in. Uh, and uh, harvest a deer for their kids. But for some kids, this is really an awesome time of year because they don't have to compete with a bunch of older hunters. It's focused for them. And they get the opportunity to learn about conservation and harvesting and the important parts of this, right? This isn't just point and shoot. You have to be able to take care of prepping that deer, uh, skinning it, butchering it. There's a lot of practice that comes into that. Now, not everyone knows these things. I had the fortunate part of this year to actually teach one of our younger hunters in the party how to skin a deer, um, which is, it's not the most fun thing to do in the world, but if you know what you're doing, you can do it relatively quick, effective, and uh, there's tricks to that as well. Uh, we do something similar in Pennsylvania with fishing. That's really awesome, actually. And I think that wild game conservation is something that everyone should be aware of because we're all eaters at the end of the day. And even if you're not a, uh, let's just say you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you have to be aware of what, how your food is grown and how it's interacting with the world. Um, you know, when you talk about vegetables, especially in mass production, uh, a lot of animals are killed during that. Rabbits, groundhogs, gophers, uh, insects, things that are uh, very vital to our ecosystem. So no matter how you eat, how you eat will affect the world around you. Uh, so this is, uh, like I said, really one that's close to home for me because I get to be the harvester, I get to be the butcher, I get to be everything in between and really go from farm to table, but it's from woods to table. Um, so after the youth hunt, that's generally when you'll have rifle season. At wrestling tournament, molding the youth, but 
but number one fan. Hey, BPD, appreciate you. Thank you for stopping in. Um, so when we have the uh, and when we have the you know the the regular hunt that comes on right after the youth hunt that's the hunt i'm usually a part of so it's one week it runs from saturday to the following sunday uh you get about nine days and you have the opportunity to go out and you have a the ability to hunt with a firearm um, so we do it as a family and we do a unique way of hunting that's not really common anymore because it is kind of dangerous it requires a lot of trust of your fellow hunter it's posts and drives so you have people that post up in front of you you walk through the woods and help push deer towards them that is how i got my deer this year um, it actually i was driving so i was the one walking through the woods it spooked up came in one of them came in between me and a fellow hunter the other one stopped in front of me and i had a clean shot so i took it out and that was our spike buck for the year um, so after that you generally have one week of muzzle loader season and then after that you have uh, a continuation of the archery season before spring hits um, and i think actually archery runs till uh I wanna say it was either just ended this last week, like they get one more week after, no, no, it runs through December. So there's a good chunk of about four months worth of deer hunting you can do. Um, now the American whitetail is of course uh, your most common venison that you're gonna harvest. Um, for me, I really enjoy it. It's probably my favorite game meat that's out there. I remember as a kid doing it um, and getting just absolute joy out of the flavor of it. And especially when you're hunting, you, you do have an appreciation for the kill. Um, so you have an appreciation for the flavor, the taste, everything in between. Um, in fact, we try to harvest as much as possible. Now my grandmother back in the day, like she went as so far as like we would harvest heart and liver and she would actually have fried deer liver during uh, hunting season. I myself am not a fan of deer liver, but I do enjoy deer heart. Sadly, I don't have any of that. We fry up deer heart during the season and we enjoy that uh, during hunting camp. And it's delightful actually. As long as you rinse it, you get the blood out. It's, it's a little gamier of a flavor, so I can understand people who don't like it. Um, but I truly do love it. I think it's a delightful uh, dish. And if you fry it and pepper it and treat it right, it can be very flavorful and very delicious, especially with some Kerrygold butter on a bun. Just saying. Um, so I, for me, it's a really, really uh, fun thing because we get to use so much. Now, we actually donate all the hides to the VA, the um, veterans here locally in Wisconsin. They'll actually take those hides and they'll tan them and make them into gloves and mittens and hand those out to the homeless and the um, underprivileged. Uh, the bones will actually go to the native tribes around here and we donate to them. Uh, and that goes for their ceremonies and for their uh, different tribal purposes. Um, and then the, the carcasses, what we do with the like rib carcasses, because that's about the only thing we can't save um, right away because they do rot very quickly and they carry a lot of meat on them um, we actually will put those out in our family farm fields and uh, eat <laughs> eat it is all uh, eat it all is what my family believes honor the life well and that's what we try to do um, so we harvest all the big meat that we can and then uh, we will mount what we can we will donate what we can to the tribes otherwise and then the main carcass the ribs which like I said rot, rot very quickly so you don't have a lot of time to get those donated or out um, we actually donate those to the eagles of our family farm. So we put two of those guys out right in our uh, family farm there and allow the eagles to pick them clean. A little sky burial, if you will. So there's a lot that we do to help make sure that the ecosystem retrieves it back. And like I said, it's a very near and dear thing to my heart when it comes to it. But not everybody's all about that life. There's a lot of trophy hunters out there. Uh, so you get a lot of people from Illinois that come up to Wisconsin for trophy hunting. They don't want the deer, they just want the antlers. So uh, I did bring some hunting facts along with that. And uh, with the, uh, sorry, as we're chopping up here, with the uh, American whitetail, I did find this one out, the largest non-typical. So two types of deer when it comes to antlers, right? You have non-typical and typical. A non-typical uh, is a rack that grows and has all of its points in different orientations. It's really not a mirror finish of each other. It can grow in wonky directions, have a ton of different points. The right side could be hanging down, the left side could be hanging up. That's called non-typical. The largest non-typical scored, uh, and they do it on a scoring system, a 333 and 7 eighths. It's a massive deer. It was killed in 1981. It was done in Missouri. The deer weighed 250 pounds, uh, and the antler alone were 11 pounds. Uh, so it, that's a big deer, and uh, they didn't have a 
a point to it, like as far as like how many points it was, but there was a 47 point non-typical buck shot in Tennessee back in 2017 that believed to be taking the point record from it. So we'll see that stuff is all heavily litigated and conservationists get involved a little bit above my head. I know I'm <laughs> the mandingo of deer, right? I know I'm talking a lot about deer, like I know it. I did a lot of research before this so I could come to you guys with some education. I have a very surface level view of uh, venison and how, well, cooking venison, I got a, I got an expert degree in, but um, how deer interact, all that stuff. But deer are mostly herbivores, right? Uh, completely herbivores, they have a very limited diet. And what you have to do is you do have to worry about, up here at least, um, they've banned what they call baiting. So baiting deer, uh, deer, baiting deer was something that was common practice for a long time. And you just lay out corn, right? You'd lay out corn and let them eat upon it. And it would give you an opportunity to kind of lure in some of the good deer for hunting season, right? Make it easier to harvest. Um, with that, uh, there were some issues. Uh, because chronic wastings disease has come about. And chronic wastings disease is a prion-based disease that has been affecting deer now for a couple years. And uh, it is affecting the population, but with the way the DNR here works in Wisconsin is that they're sectioning it off county by county and they're preventing um, I believe in most areas, baiting is a no-no. Not in some areas, yes. Yeah. So in Wisconsin, it's by county. Um, so the county we hunt in is no longer baitable. Um, in fact, a lot of the counties are. Um, but what they do is basically, once a county has been recognized to contain CWD within it, um, baiting is made illegal for a minimum of three years until CWD is not tested positive again in any deer harvests. Um, so it's because it's transferred by saliva. What happens is a chronic wasting disease deer comes over nibbles dribbles its saliva the prions are in that and they can live forever if you've ever looked into prions it's one of the scariest viruses out there it's the same thing that mad cow disease is it lives through almost everything it'll get you um, so Good news, it has not crossed humans yet, but what it'll do is it will force the deer to basically look like it has rabies. It's foaming from the mouth, it's salivating uncontrollably because that's how it spreads, and it goes from there. It's just, it's not a good thing for the animal. So, like I said, baiting has become a no-no here as well in a lot of the counties we use. Um, so, back onto the topic here. Uh, made it a lot easier back in the day to hunt and shoot with doing that. Um, we don't get the opportunity to do that here anymore in Wisconsin, which is both good and bad, but it makes, it makes for better hunters. So also makes it a little more challenging to get your harvest that you want. Here's what it is. I'm not hurt by it. So another fun fact, uh, so we talked typical versus non-typical. The largest non-typical, of course, being that 333-point score and a 47-point buck. Well, when it comes to typical, that means that your antlers mirror either side, right? So you got six points on this side, six points on this side. And of course, you can have a six and a seven, but for the most part, it matches. Um, it's pretty even and pretty symmetrical. Um, so, the record has actually stood for over 65 years, I found out, uh, or, mm -mm, sorry, 55 years, 55 years. And uh, sorry, as I'm talking here, right, I'm not even talking about what I'm doing. We minced our, gar our, our uh, onion up. I'm now doing some thick slices for my medallion potatoes. So we're gonna end up having these sprawled out and they're gonna end up making a really nice stack for us as well. So I'm doing about a quarter inch cut to three eighths inch cut here, um, just to make a nice thick potato that we're gonna end up having baked off and really, really, really delicious. Um, so the largest typical was a 14 pointer actually killed in Peoria, Illinois, just south of me here. Um, and uh, in Peoria, it still holds the record today. It was a, and to give you the perspective here, typical versus non-typical, the largest non-typical was a 333 and seven eighths, which is a combination of height, width, inner width, points, all these things. Um, so the largest typical was a 204 and a half, and that deer also weighed close to 250 pounds dressed. Uh, so it is a, there's some big animals out there, I'll tell you that much. But the Wisconsin whitetail, super majestic animal, but also causes a lot of accidents. It's a big reason why we deer hunt up here as well. It's, a, it's payback for all the times that you've wrecked your Toyota Corolla or your Honda Civic, driving late night through some cornfields. Um, but 
we can't always just blame it on them too. You know, maybe, maybe you shouldn't have been driving so fast. But um, fun facts, Michigan, for instance, um, Michigan, because of the amount of snow and deer that they have, especially in the UP, um, their in car insurance rates are actually escalated because of it, because of the amount of accidents. So if you ever live in uh, the UP, the big ones have common sense. That is true. Uh, you never, you'll never end up hitting a, a 30 pointer on the road. Um, actually it's fun too because like you'll see these these animals are rather intelligent um, and uh, hunting season this year was really awesome actually what I'll do after the stream I'll post some pictures up not of the deer but uh, of some of the beautiful scenery I had out in the Wisconsin wilderness uh, over hunting season it was really cool I got to see some woodpeckers playing around I had some squirrels that were jumping through the woods I have some beautiful landscape and the panoramics that you guys will probably love we'll post it up in the discord today when we're done here so uh, we got our medallions cut we're going to set these guys aside as well. Like I said, we've got onion medallions that are going to go under our steak. We've got potato medallions that will be dressed on the side. And we have our onion now set up. We are going to go ahead and dress one carrot, which I'm going to go ahead and probably do a uh, um, more of a, oh gosh, um, why is the word escaping me now? Bam, hit me that cut cut list. Um, and you're going to, as soon as you do it, I'm going to end up knowing exactly what I'm going to Mm, I'm here. Words, words are hard. Um, Julian, a Julian cut. Thank you. Jean, what's up, my man? Welcome in. Pleasure seeing you here. So happy you could make it to the stream, you handsome son of a gun. So we're gonna do a Julian cut on our. Uh, carrot here and that's just to give us some real nice color and that's gonna go in with our potatoes as well um, We are actually gonna cook them separately um, But we're gonna end up having that all kind of linger around and have a good time uh, Yeah, so a julienne cut. Thank you Bam for throwing that up there. Um, this is really a thin Strip cut is really what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna end up lopping off the end here because we're not going to use a ton we're going to use just a little bit so lock off the end and the root we're going to use this big guy right there and i keep going to my trash can because i'm a loser we are going to wash these bad boys off and i'm going to end up squaring it up as well we're going to we're going to generate some waste on my carrot <coughs> pardon me for the cough i apologize actually that's a pretty good carrot Bamboozles, who are you? Never heard of you. New here. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, by the way, Fawful, throwing it back out there, guys. The new merch. Go check out that new Christmas merch. Um, the holiday merch is out. We have an amazing sweater, an ugly sweater, if you will, coming out for you guys, just in time for holiday season. If you like the beautiful LMC t-shirt, and soon to be Miss Tiff coming out here in her LMC t-shirt, the women's get a nice little difference. Um, but get get yours now, guys. It's uh, especially the ugly sweater. The ugly sweater is only gonna be available for <clears throat> the holiday season. So once it's gone, it's gone. I'm not bringing it back. Um, and it's a beautiful Christmas tree. It's got our little angry fries underneath, a nice playback from uh, Frymageddon. And the whole reason we have the, the Fawful um, emote. Thank you, Bam, for the Fafal emote. Um, so it is the only reason we have those. Um, so yeah, get yours now while you can. And then, uh, like I said earlier, we are gonna start a 30-day uh, t-shirt release. I'm gonna knock the price down as low as I can on those bad boys. And uh, we are gonna have, uh, we couldn't keep six, <laughs> six and a half in stock last year. No one, no one wants to know. <laughs> no one wants it now. Oh, I remember that caliber from last week's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we ended up having, uh, we're going to end up having every 30 days, we're going to cycle out a new t-shirt. Um, and like I said, it's going to be our deal of the month. You're going to have 30 days to get it. And once it's done, it's done. That design will never be used again. So fun fact about me, uh, not only did I cook for years, um, I actually went to school for graphic design. 
And uh, so being able to do some of this merch has been really fun for me. And it gives me an outlet to express my creativity beyond cooking. So I, I think you guys will like some of these designs. I know I love making them. So feel free to scoop some of those bad boys up. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing those for 30 days at a crack and they're done, they're done. In fact, uh, someone the other day had asked about my tattoos. Um, that, that one right there was actually because I thought I was never gonna work again because I was a uh, uh, Genosaurus, then I'd like to introduce ourselves. This is the Moran Cooking, a cooking channel. <laughs> uh, all others based on family education and delicious nom noms. Feel free to ask questions and replicate the dish. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will say, uh, I never thought I was going to work a real job again, so I got a tattoo on my wrist because um, that was the t-shirt company I used to run. But now I have the opportunity to make the designs I want to make without having to answer to a person who did not care for my designs. Um, and I think you guys will love them. I really do. Um, I, I have a blast making them, so hopefully you have a blast wearing them. So we've got our Julian cut started here. You can see we've got some nice long strips of carrot. Um, so that's your julienne cut. Uh, we've got, this one's a little more, we could probably end up doing a single slice down the center on this one. Great way to force us to collect your ish. I have been collecting teas along with my Funkos. <laughs> Too bad I'm broke. Well, Gene, good news for you. Like I said, I'm gonna knock these down uh, as cheap as I can make them. Um, hell, I don't even know if I wanna make profit on them. I think it's more fun to have that gear out there. Um, so we'll see if, uh, we'll see what we can do price-wise on these. Of course, the holiday special one is already out there, but the new t-shirts starting Jan 1, you guys are not gonna wanna miss. Uh, 2024 is gonna be a great year to be wearing your Lumberman gear. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. So we're gonna cut up these last couple carrots and get these guys rolling. So we're just gonna put these, um, ooh, that one got a sliver taken out of it, poor girl. Um, we're gonna end up making these on the side. We're just gonna do them in a little butter, a little salt and pepper. Um, I think it'll turn out really delicious. And eh, I don't like you. Put you away. And these guys really wanna curve. Another fun fact about Columbia, I used to hate vegetables as a kid. Now I eat carrots raw when I screw them up. Love it. So we got our carrots with our julienne cut. We'll set those guys aside. Now, I'm kind of waiting to do the pomegranate because this one's gonna be a little fun. Um, let's get our mushrooms because we're gonna do mushroom caps. So we've talked mushrooms before. We've got the baby portabellas. I love me a baby portabella. Fresh veggies, I'll numb on all day. You know, I will too. Uh, the only one I'm still not a huge fan of, broccoli. Not a fan of broccoli, hugely. Um, I'll eat it in many dishes, but raw, you're, uh, you're not gonna find me having too many raw ones. So we're gonna dry brush our lovely nom 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 mushrooms. Um, guys, if you've been a part of my streams, you know I love my mushrooms. They're so delicious. So we're just gonna give, uh, and I'll just show you here, we're gonna grab hold of the stem here, and we're just gonna give a little twist. And that'll give us our cap set aside. Now, um, I don't wanna throw these away, because I feel like I can use those. Yeah, I will. I'll use those in the onion mints when we get to that point. Uh, Pardon me. Um, the reason why is mushrooms do a really good job carrying a beef flavor with them already, um, but they also do a great job of absorbing other flavors. So when we end up putting this whole dish together, especially with this being a chocolate uh, pomegranate sauce that we're gonna do, and I just threw that away, of course, like an idiot. Uh, threw it in my, my wonderful veggie bin here. Um, so I really want that pomegranate tart and that chocolate tart to really carry with with this. I think it's gonna be awesome. Waste not, want everything on a plate. I'm with you. I'm with you. So we're gonna set that stem aside. And we got that guy there. Um, mushroom wise, I'm not sure how, I'm, how many I'm feeling here. Um, I think this is gonna plate up beautifully. I have an image in my head of how this is gonna plate. I think it's gonna turn out great. Uh, by the way, don't forget to use up your points, guys. You got, them, you got the meal tickets down below. Don't forget that you can bring in Miss Tiff whenever you please, who could probably uh, enjoy yourself a carrot at this point if she really wanted to. There's not much else on here. Um, you've also got your, uh, 
uh, amazing uh, Brian the Supervisor, which we still have several supervisors and have not been seen. Or you can check out my sweet rides, which by the way, I picked up new sweet rides today. I was over at the Walmart uh, doing some shopping and they had some pretty nice new Hot Wheels. So your boy got yourself some new Hot Wheels today. Um, so make sure you use up them points. We appreciate you. Um, five. Let's do six mushrooms just in case. I think six mushrooms gives us uh, plenty of mushrooms. One, they're delicious. Two, um, I then have the opportunity to pick and choose the most prettiest ones when they're done. All right, so uh, mushrooms we can put away. And then we can hop on the, well, the asparagus, we're not gonna use a ton of asparagus today. We're gonna just use a couple of them. Nothing special with asparagus. You're gonna end up, we're gonna lop off the ends just to make sure we got those pieces all gone and give us some nice, beautiful sticks of asparagus. And those are gonna just be butter, garlic, salt, and pepper. Mm-mm, good asparagus. So let's put the mushrooms away. We've had enough fun with those today. And of course, stay energized and stay uh, frosty, my friends. Who is joining us today? Ooh. You know what? You know who we haven't heard from? We haven't heard from our good friend. Yoshi. Yoshi uh, visits the kitchen from time to time. He's been known to uh, be a fan of mushrooms, um, specifically toad mushrooms. Uh, he also will be a, uh, uh, a bit of a, a hungry fool, if you will, right? Uh, known for sucking it all in. Uh, so let's go ahead and get Yoshi a spot on the table here. In fact, I want Yoshi watching my carry gold. That way no one gets my carry gold, all right? Appreciate Eugene for hopping in on that. I need this field supervision out here. It can get tedious. Um, let's get our pomegranate solved out. So pomegranate, straight in from California. Uh, Walmart is packed with them. It must be end of season. Uh, I do love me some pomegranate. More hungry than Kirby, I've heard. I've heard such things. I've heard such things. There's grand debate over the Kirby v. Yoshi. Longer tongue for sure. I would agree with you. Definitely, definitely. It's alarming how long it is. So, pomegranates. Pomegranates are a very unique fruit. Um, I loaded up on fun facts for pomegranates for you guys today, but pomegranate is actually probably one of my favorite fruits um, as far as flavor goes. It's also one of the messiest ones. So we're gonna keep this guy off to the side a little bit. I don't wanna stain all the red everywhere. Um, in fact, we're gonna get a little paper towel out. This guy could make a mess in a heartbeat. So you can see that beautiful red is already popping out everywhere. We're gonna get a separate jar so that way we can keep it contained. Now, pomegranate actually comes from the uh, Latin words pomam and uh, what is it, granatum. Uh, pomam is apple and gr granatum? Granatum uh, is seeded, so it's suited for seeded apple. Uh, I guess we don't want to take it for pomegranate. Your dad, I see what you did there. Um, <laughs> so. It has a really long and fascinating history. Um, it was actually one of the first cultivated fruits in Asia over 5,000 years ago. Um, the Phoenicians introduced it over to the African continent when they founded Carthage. Um, and it's been around for a really long time. So uh, let me grab a, like I said, a separate bowl here. So the pomegranate is gonna be really fun to work with today because it will stain everything. Fun facts about pomegranates. So we quartered, or we opened it up in a half and we're actually, what I should do is just quarter the darn thing. So we're gonna open the quarters up. So pomegranates actually have little pockets within them. And if you can open it up well enough, you can actually strip out those pockets pretty easily. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kind of crack it open there and you can see it's already leaking all over um, as far as the little hearts popping out. Um, it's really good stuff. I love me a good pomegranate. I do, it's like I said, one of my favorite fruits. Um, so 
it was actually introduced to the Spanish uh, American, or what was it, introduced into Spanish America in the late 16th century and into California Spanish settlers back right before America became a country uh, over in 1769. Um, so the pomegranate's been around for a really long time. Um, it was actually referenced uh, in the Bible, uh, specifically in the Old Testament. Ancient Greeks considered the pomegranate actually a sign of fertility. Um, so a lot of good stuff behind the pomegranate. And um, for those who have never had one or had the fortune of trying one out, it is a delightful fruit. Tart, but sweet. Um, it's, I, I would say, akin to that of a raspberry almost. Yeah. I mean, same, same, but different, right? It has that tartness, it has that sweetness. Texture is totally different. You know, it's a big, uh, all right, I would say big. It's a fleshy seed or a, or a fleshy fruit around a seed. Um, it's really, like I said, absolutely delightful. And I think it's gonna pair really well with this gamey meat that we have in venison. Um, and I think that between it and the dark chocolate, the red wine, it will settle very well. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be here forever. I'm glad you'll be here forever, Bam. I'm glad. All right, so we got one quartered out. Um, let's get the next one going. Uh, now, pomegranate, uh, you can actually check these out. Uh, you can get the juice pretty specifically. Um, the juice is, uh, what is it, that palm juice? It's a concentrate. Super, super tart if you do not uh, thin it out. I found that out by mistake one day. I was like, oh, pomegranate juice? I'm gonna try this out. Took one sip, immediately had the most sour face ever. Um, but pomegranate ends up being a very tart fruit and concentrate, but is extremely heart healthy, packed with antioxidants. Like I said, all in all, like pomegranates are really like a super fruit for you. Um, super delicious too. So get yourself a pomegranate. Um, a lot of the harvest is coming through right now. So if you hit your local grocery stores, you should be able to find this stuff. They are, like I said, absolutely de delectable little treats and they make such good pairings with a ton of different foods. So get them while you can. I bought two of them, so I'm sure I'm gonna make more uh, pomegranate dishes at some point this week. Don't know if we'll do it for stream. We may do it for stream, we'll find out. That's the beautiful part about this. We don't know what we're doing. That's just it. We don't even know what we're doing. All right, so half a pomegranate down, one more half to go. So much pomegranate, so little time. Actually, we have plenty of time here. Love what we're, you know, a solid hour into the stream have not cooked a single item. Just cutting today, that's all it is. But if you eat all those antioxidants, <laughs> won't I run out of oxidants? You will, you will, you'll be fully unoxidized, uh, which is not what you want. Not what you want at all. Yeah, a fun, uh, uh, a fun guy uh, to uh, look into about pomegranate. Uh, Alton Brown did an entire special on these, and I know I talk about him a lot. He's my boyfriend. Um, I love me. <laughs> Miss Tiff is laughing because she knows it's true. I talk about him all the time. Uh, that Alton Brown did a wonderful special on these. Um, and he also shows you like easy ways to peel them, easy ways to deseed them, um, and how to utilize them. It's really, yes, 10 of 10 would recommend if you're interested in them. Ah, fungi. I know as I have mushrooms on the table and I'm talking about fungi. So we're gonna end up rinsing these bad boys down before we end up cooking them off, just to make sure we got all of the, uh, the actual covering off because some of that still still does fall into our little bowl here and it'll also give us a chance to get all of the other goodies off of these things one more to go guys we're almost there i suppose you know what miss tiff if you wouldn't mind would you mind bumping that uh, oven on for me miss tiff making a pass through here not wearing her LMC gear, mind you. A little no, disappointed. Like she said she looks too fat. Yeah. You're pregnant. You're pregnant. <laughs> You're supposed to be. I just want to like, try this little thing right here. Oh, she wants a pomegranate. That's what she's in for. I've never had one. 
You never had one? You've never had pomegranate? Miss, I, I've known this woman. How dare you say that? <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I love it. I love it. That's her words. Yeah, she says she looks too fat within her shirt. You look beautiful, honey. You're glowing. You should be rocking that awesome LMC shirt. No, I don't I can know. See my belly button. I can see my belly button. You're people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> uh, three fifty. No, four twenty-five. If you wouldn't mind. I appreciate you. <laughs> um. My, my sweet wife making one more. 10 weeks. Damn right it's 10 weeks. 425. Yep, baby Lumbee on its way. Little Miss Baby Lumbee. Can I have this? Yeah, you can have that one. Belly buttons are his thing. She knows. <laughs> That's what I'm into. What can I say? All right, so we got our pomegranates all done up. We got ourselves a nice little base of pomegranate. We're gonna get this a little rinse out, get all that juice taken care of, and just give them a quick strain. And make sure that we get the separation we want. So if you look, the white parts float and the red parts sink. So we can very simply Grab out those white parts before we cook as I throw it right back in because I'm an imbecile. So we're gonna grab all these white parts out. Now, the way we're gonna make our sauce so that we don't have seeds in it is when we go to saute up our pomegranate and our chocolate and everything, we're actually gonna end up straining it as well when we're done. And that'll help us keep all the seeds out of our sauce for our steak. I am really excited for this. I've never made a chocolate sauce before. So once again, we're doing something on a Friday for fancy that could have totally been, you'll float too. Oh gosh, don't start that. My wife is definitely afraid of that movie. She's tried watching it four times and has never, ever finished it. Is he talking about it? She, he's talking about it. Yeah. Yep. Well, to be fair, I watched it when I shipped out. That was way too good. Yeah, she watched it as a kid and is now scarred as an adult and still can't watch it as an adult. Pennywise is too wise for her. You'll float too. We all float down here. We all float down here. Oh my, what about the original? Um, so that was it, like she watched the original as a kid, couldn't do it, she'd hate my impression. <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact, we all do impressions nowadays, Bam. Um, now that I know that you do a great it impression, uh, we'll have to have you send a sound bit one of these days. All right. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no is what she says. Um, so we're gonna take our little mushroom bits here, the leftover stems, we're gonna give those a quick mince. That way we've got uh, these all taken care of and then I'll mix in with the mince, mince mush or mince onion. Jiminy crickets, words are hard. And, oh, getting away from me, little guy. And then we will be ready to really get to doing some of the cooking here pretty quickly. Um, or at least finalize all the prep for the cooking because the potatoes are gonna, gonna go in first. They're gonna need a little bit of time and We'll have to get some of our pans ready as well. Our Pam pans, Pam, 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 Pamba, Pam, um, pans, pans. Fair warning, love you, Tiff. <laughs> uh, at least he said he loves you first before he terrifies you. I think it was a week ago uh, before I got sick, we were over here doing impressions of uh, NPR and uh, Morgan Freeman and Hormone Monsters. It was a good time. Uh, glad I'm not sick anymore, Jimmy. Uh, I found I can do a much better impression of all those characters when I'm sick because, you know, nasal passages and whatnot. Um, but uh, boy, howdy, I'd rather breathe than do impressions. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. Welcome to NPR. We'll talk to you about just about anything. All right. So once last little pass through with the knife here to get our mints on. And that should be good. Um, I lied. Let's prep this little guy real quick. 
All right. And we're just gonna grab out two or three stocks. I don't think we need, I'm gonna grab out four or five stocks because Miss Tiff is staring at the asparagus like it, like she should have married it instead of me. Um, which is fair, which is fair. It's far tastier. But uh, I don't make your pee smell, so I got that going for me, you know. <laughs> uh, she's like, I don't even care. I don't even care. So we get some fresh asparagus. All right, so we've got a lot of the prep done. I suppose we can probably put some of these in bowls. That way we're ready to start firing away. I like doing the prep out of the way first. You know, these last few streams, I've been just trying to keep it as we go, but I think it's much more fun if we can get everything done up and set aside in their respective areas. And then I don't have to worry about rinsing my cutting board 24 fucking times. Just saying, it's really good that way. Um, so let's get our mushroom and our onion set aside the minces and actually we can take those mushrooms there and put them in this bowl with the carols because it won't matter they're going to cook separately and they're not going to mingle with flavors that's what i love about some dry ones and then we're going to take this onion all of it we're going to mix it in there it's gonna be some strong sauce. All right, now we got a cleaned up cutting board. We're gonna do our asparagus as well. Only 23 times, only 23 times. All right. What counter? What did I do? 23 times what? Oh my gosh. Is that an it thing? I don't know. I don't know. All right, we got our asparagus now set aside. Let's get our taters going. So tater wise, like I said, very simple on this one, but we are gonna rinse these as well. We wanna get all the starches off because I want a little crisp on these. I want them to be a little crispier than normal. Um, so, I do want to give them a quick rinse off. Ba, 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 ba. There's a bowl somewhere in this darn house. We'll just put it in a Tupper for now. And I'm just knocking off all the starches is really what I'm going to do. Um, so the starch prevents a crisp, right? We learned that when we did French fries a couple weeks ago before they all fell on the floors. Um, and we all mourned and cried and just really gave up on life that day. Uh, my children uh, lost a father there uh, for a short period of time. His soul carried onward. All right. So we got those rinsed off. We'll stack them up for a second. And we will get out some paper towel to drive these off and get ourselves some parchment paper as well. So let's just put you guys on there and give you a pat dry. Pat dry, pat dry. A moment of silence for the tragedy and that's enough. Let's carry on. Yeah, that was, uh, I want you to know, I don't know that I'll ever, ever in my head unlive that moment of my fries just leaving my countertop as if, as if they had no place to go. Just, just carry on my wayward fries. There was no peace when they were done though. But I kept crying. All right, so we're just gonna pat and dry all of these bad boys down. Can you feel that? Sorry, sorry, couldn't help myself. Could not help myself. All right. So we've got some nice dry taters, starch free, as agreed upon by me. All 
and now we can throw some parchment paper down. Now, with the parchment paper, we are gonna lightly season these, and we are also going to, boop, boop. Couldn't find a rhythm if it hit me in the head. Uh, that's also fair. Uh, fun fact, um, your boy here used to play the cornet, and might I add, poorly. I feel like if you're artistic in any way, shape, or form, that you get one medium of artwork, or maybe two tops, right? Like, I can cook, which could be considered an art, and I can draw, ish. Um, and that's the extent of my artwork. Um, if you go back to my early streams, I actually had a Rick and Morty I put up on a poster because I didn't know how to do splash screens um, or, uh, you know, any type of, uh, like, displays. So I just put up a picture of Rick and Morty and threw it off. You should have chosen the triangle. <laughs> I should have chosen the triangle. Uh, I actually, I really wanted to play the French horn, despite the fact that it's one of the hardest instruments to play. Um, and I'm glad I never did because it was one of the hardest instruments to play. Um, we're gonna get out some canola oil, just because I want these guys nice and crispy and it has a high smoke point. And we're not gonna go crazy. We're just gonna put a little bit down and we are going to, uh, just use a paper towel. I'm going paper towel crazy. Like my first two streams, I yelled at Bam because I didn't want to use a ton of paper towel and here I am just wasting away on it, trying to save a two by four and apparently I can't. But we're just gonna smear all over our parchment paper here, some canola oil. And that'll give us a nice little base of oil for our taters to crisp up on. I love me some french fried taters. Triangle is too advanced for him. Rockwell, gosh, I missed you. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, I, think I'm a, I think I'm a fluke. I can cook, draw, play six instruments, participate in several sports and more. Uh, I was an athlete uh, and I was a mathlete um, and uh, I can cook and I can draw. That I'll take. I, I don't need any more than that. Um, and I can articulate semi well. I can speak pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Ooh, I was actually going to season the pan first. So let's do that. So seasoning wise, we're, nothing, we're not gonna go too complicated with anything. We're gonna do a little salt, a little pepper, and we are also going to do a little brown sugar and garlic uh, Kinder seasoning. Um, not sponsored by Kinders, but Kinders, if you're out there and you want someone to uh, talk wonderfully about your products, I'm your guy. I'm your guy. So we're just throwing down a little salt, a little SMP, a little salt and pepper, um, and a little bit of that brown sugar with wood fire garlic. So Kinder seasoning right there. This is some good stuff, gotta get it. Uh, brown sugar and garlic, yeah. Um, I will humbly say Kinder's has some of the best blends that are out there. Uh, 10 of 10 would recommend, super quality stuff, super good uh, as far as uh, flavor goes. Um, we use it on everything and they have such varieties. Like we don't use this particular one, but they have like a buttery um, steakhouse blend that I will use on damn near everything. It is so good. Uh, we should get that Kerrygold sponsor too and brag to Matt. I should, I should. We should reach out to Kerrygold and see if they sponsor the stream. Um, just because we got that good Kerrygold butter already sitting there. Yoshi just overlooking the Kerrygold. God, you know, it's the little things. And then what we'll do is we'll send Matt and Becky chunks of Kerrygold. So, so they'll just be like, why am I getting random butter from Lumbee? And I can be like, because I'm sponsored by Kerrygold Butter. Uh, we tried to help you, M&B. We tried to help you. We tried to get you that sweet Kerrygold sponsorship, but you wanted nothing to do with it. So I'm just gonna dab some oil that's left over on here. And actually that's gonna be way too difficult. F that S Batman. Where's my brush? Where's my brush? Getting a little baster brush. I'm a master baster. I'm a master baster. Tiff even just went, what? What did you just say to me? I'll take a photo of my Kinders and put it in Discord. Yeah, please do. I love, like I said, Kinders is by far one of my favorites as far as uh, uh, seasonings go. I've got the Buttery Steakhouse, which was by far my favorite. Um, we have the poultry, we have the seafood, we have, um, I think I have the poultry uh, Buttery House or 
chicken one. They they just have so many good seasonings out there. You know, you can't go wrong with Kinders. It's really, uh, they've got so many good blends and they've got rubs, they've got seasonings. Nowadays they even have, uh, Oh, what is it? Um, they have uh, sauces as well. So you can get like um, the Korean barbecue by Kinders, which is really good as well. Uh, yeah, they've got so much good stuff. So much good stuff. Highly recommended. Um, yeah. Can't say it enough. Cannot say it enough. Uh, that look, hey, that looks pretty good, and you're making me hungry. Hey, welcome into the channel. Appreciate it. Uh, one FPPT. Um, one N F PPT. One one enough puppet. I'm, I'm trying this. I don't know. I, I you let me know what you want me to call you. Um, so yeah, uh, Bam. If you want to throw up the menu tonight, we've got some really good stuff going on tonight. We have got a chocolate pomegranate sauce that's going to go on top of our uh, venison tonight. It's going to be delightful. Oh, thank you for the follow. Super appreciate it. Um, yeah, this is going to be really delicious stuff. So we're just hitting the uh, the taters up. Um, so we did some canola oil here. We're going to finish off with some S and P, and these guys are going to go in the oven. Um, I would say we could probably go close to about it's gonna be about 20 to 25 minutes uh, just to get them soft and crispy should be really good kinders and Weber you know um, I'm a big fan of kinders I have yet to try Weber um, I feel like and this is gonna sound super weird right so kinders is a big company I'm sure that they definitely cut some corners but like Weber as a grill company coming out with seasonings like I feel like is like to me that feels more like a cash grab and like it wouldn't have as good and I know that's probably a crock of crap coming from this guy who uses some half-ass seasonings as well but I don't know it just it feels goofy to me that's just me uh, picture in general all right all right I'm gonna have to check that out while we're doing this real quick so let me toss this bad boy in and we're gonna set a timer for 20 five minutes all right we're gonna go with 20 you can always we can always add more start time all right let's take a peek real quick let's let's see what bammy boy is working with um ooh, look at that kinder's collection okay what do we got we got the roasted chicken with garlic or roasted garlic brown butter mesquite salt and pepper the prime steak that's where it's at all right for everyone looking in there get in the discord first off but that bottom left hand one is where it's at uh the caramelized onion but but oh caramelized onion butter my man and then carne asada i like that they actually make a caramelized onion burger seasoning as well which is chef's kiss uh the honey garlic weber is fantastic on ch chicken it puts a lovely glaze on it oh okay okay um we keep our we keep our favorites actually in the old grill tray and we're rocking the prime steak right so prime steak with uh black garlic and truffle here we have the buttery steakhouse my personal favorite now this is so good it tastes it smells buttery and i mean it's not overpowering either um, we've got the brown sugar rub which is a favorite in this house as well we've got the buttery poultry blend and mind you this is just the quick grab basket this is not the the deep closet that has more so the caramelized onion burger that is super good sweet um, and savory and then we've got the wood fired garlic uh and that is with hardwood smoked flavor that's some good stuff as well uh if you do not shop kinders get in on that they they just have so many good options and flavors when it comes to their seasonings i can't say it enough so onion we're gonna set you over here um we could probably just set you right on top i just don't want it to fall apart um we do gotta crack some garlic and once we're done cracking garlic we can actually start cutting some steak now too um that reminds me let's get some heat on our pan here because we do need to season and season we need to non-stick our uh stainless steel here um it's been fresh washed and scrubbed so we do want to make sure that we make this bad boy non-stick or we're going to have a rough time tonight so we're going to crank that heat up to about an eight um, we're going to get some oil in there and let it saturate for those who don't know yes uh you can make um 
You can make your stainless steel non-stick. It requires oil and high amounts of heat and it won't add any flavors to it. And we'll go ahead and just kick up that uh, camera there. Um, so you, now you can see my lovely stove top as we're talking as well. How did you learn? How did you all learn about cooking? Ooh, uh, so cooking for me. Um, for me, cooking was uh, my dad. So my dad is a chef by trade, uh, executive chef. Um, retired roughly, gosh, when was it? Um, about 13 years ago now. Uh, 13 years ago, he retired officially in 2010. He took a small position, just kind of helping out at my brother's school um, for a little while. But my dad owned his own restaurant and worked under Chef Louie in the bakery in Chicago for several years. That's where he did his apprenticeship and then worked at several country clubs. Um, full season armory and channel. Okay. Full seasoning armory and channel. My man. Um, so for me, uh, cooking has been a part of my life. My dad bought a restaurant and a campground when I was 10 years old and I worked with him for 10 years in the kitchen directly. And, uh, a lot of people would look at you and go, oh my gosh, that's cool. Like you got to work with your dad. Like it really wasn't like you would think it wasn't like, oh son, come on, let's go cook some things together. It was why the hell are you burning the chicken that has to go out to a customer, get it out of the pan and recook it now. So my dad was an awesome dude love him to death but he pulled no punches just because I was his son um, so I learned to cook that way and uh, so for 10 years I worked with him and then eventually I ventured off on my own and became a kitchen manager um, after college and worked in several kitchens. And then I left the industry altogether. I now work in sales um, unrelated to the food industry at all. Um, just, you know, fell out of it. And nowadays, I just love cooking for other people and I love talking to other people I cook. So I created this channel so that I could share my time and experience with all of you as we cook some really weird and fun dishes. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, my dad was a, a specialist in Hungarian cuisines and Eastern European cuisines, which was uh, his forte. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I, like myself, prefer really south of the border meals a lot of time, um, but I stick to American uh, uh, savory meals as well. So, you know, horse piece. Um, how about you? Did you, uh, dang, I was a child when he retired. I'm only 15. Um, yeah, dude, uh, he is a, he is an experienced chef, uh, and he taught me quite a bit of stuff. And that's why I do this is just kind of share that same knowledge he shared with me and all the cool things that he got to do. Uh, fun fact guys, fun fact. Um, uh, my dad was once kissed by Dennis Rodman, uh, for his meal that he cooked him down in Texas in the mid nineties. So uh, that was a thing. Dennis Rodman kissed my father on the mouth, uh, specifically for an omelet that he cooked him after a weekend of debauchery. So I've got three cloves of garlic here. I am gonna take two of these. We're gonna mince those up. I'm gonna take two and I'm going to pop them just out. <laughs> cool, I know. Um, my dad, uh, when we lived in, so another fun fact of uh, my family, we lived in Texas before we lived in Wisconsin uh, and my dad owned his restaurant. So uh, he worked and why he actually bought his own restaurant. He worked for a resort. <laughs> he didn't wash his lips after that day. Uh, he definitely did, let me tell you. Um, you don't want you don't want Rodman on the lips too long. That's how you get in infection. Um, so we lived in Texas for 10 years prior to um, us moving to Wisconsin and owning a restaurant, um, which was really fun. You know, if you, uh, you ever had the experience to work and live in a restaurant, um, it's a, it's a thing. It really is a thing. Um, because we lived right above it. But we, uh, he worked for a restaurant that, uh, uh, actually a five-star resort in Northern Texas called Tanglewood, if you ever look it up. Um, and it was a hot spot in the 90s for celebrities. And uh, so like as a child, and I don't remember any of this stuff. My dad told me, my parents told me, I have photos and videos of this stuff. So like Reba McIntyre, Celine Dion, uh, Dennis Rodman, Madonna, um, uh, at the time, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, like a lot of these people came and visited this resort because it was a five-star resort and it was very low key. They could go and be under the radar. They had a massive lake at their disposal um, and didn't have to worry about people bombarding them. 
staff was very professional, all that good stuff. So Celine, or, uh, Reba McIntyre had a son who was about the same age as me, uh, anywhere from young 30s to mid 30s now. And my mom would be called by my dad because he didn't have a play buddy to come up and play in the pool with Reba's kid. And I was like a sit-in paid for friend because my dad ran the entire resort. Um, I personally wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do wash them. I'd feel famous. Um, so yeah, he, uh, uh, Dennis Rodman ended up uh, staying there. He had a boat at the marina, had a debaucherous weekend where he was partying at the nightclub and causing problems. My dad was of course playing cover and PR for him because that was his job in the 90s was make sure that these celebrities have a great time and make sure if they do anything wrong that no one knows about it. Um, so by Sunday, the weekend was ending, Rodman was heading back to Chicago and uh, my dad uh, was cooking his breakfast. So as the head chef and as the um, manager of the resort, he would always cook the final meal before the guests left if they were staying in the top tier VIP areas. My dad cooked him his favorite omelet with a side, and when he was done, Rodman called for the chef to come into the room. He wanted to talk to him about his meal. When my dad showed up, he, Mr. Rodman, how was everything? I, I apologize if anything was wrong. How can I make it better for you? And he stood up. Now, mind you, Rodman is almost seven feet tall. My dad is shorter than I am. He's 5'9", and Rodman grabbed him by the head, bent down, gave him a kiss on the lips, and said that was the best damn breakfast he's ever had in his life, and he thanked him for it, and then he walked away. So that's my Rodman kissed my father story. Um, but yeah, we got to meet a lot of cool things. So like my dad has still a bunch of autographs of uh, Dennis Rodman and from Chuck Norris. Uh, I actually got to be in a karate tournament in Dallas, Fort Worth when I was a kid because my dad knew Chuck Norris and I took second in it in the youth competition um, in Taekwondo. There was a lot of cool stuff um, and my dad gave that all up so he could own his own restaurant in Northern Wisconsin, um, which I now hate him for because I apparently had a really cool youth and I don't remember half of it. So I've got some good smoke going. We're gonna go ahead and kill that heat back down. Miss Tiff is staring at me like you butthole. Now my house smells like burnt oil. As you guys can see, it's not really burnt, but we have some good toastiness coming off. And we do want to dump that and get rid of it. Bad oil. So we're just going to dump it in our bad pan. Get that nice sizzle that no one wants. And we're going to grab out some paper towels so we don't have any oil dripping onto our countertop. Oh. So now that we got some good heat there, we're gonna set that back. We're gonna let the other heat die down and we're gonna kick on our exhaust fan so Miss Tiff doesn't kill me later. <coughs> I feel like you're meeting your dad now, he's super cool. Um, he is super cool, I love my dad. He's actually, uh, he's on his way down to Texas. We have some family getting married over the next couple weeks and uh, he's gonna go snowbird down there. My dad is now deep into his 60s. Um, and retired and yeah, he's a cool dude. Definitely a cool dude. And I would love to have him jump in on the stream once. Who knows, uh, with Christmas time coming up, I might be able to convince him to come over and we can do a stream on pierogies. Um, my dad is, uh, like I said, big into Eastern European cuisine. And for years, uh, we have a big family on his side, uh, was the maker of all the pierogies for our family. So he's a super cool dude. Um, doesn't get around well anymore, but he can definitely instruct like the old chef he is. So um, yeah, it's a good time. Sorry for just lurking. We're decorating our tree tonight. No worries, Gene. Happy that you're lurking, man. We enjoy the lurk. Lurk away, handsome. Lurk away. All right, so we've got our minced garlic for our veggies, and I'm gonna just do a single slice to open up this garlic for our steak. And that will commence all of the cutting we need on this cutting board for any vegetables. And now we can start cutting up some meats. Love cutting meat. It's gonna be some good stuff. You go, Gene, proud of you and your family time. Yeah, Gene, family time's important, man. A lot of people don't give themselves that opportunity. Um, I am one of said people, no, I'm, I try to make sure Miss Tiff gets plenty of my attention. So we have got one of our venison tenderloins here. Now, fun fact, these are, you know, when you do a filet from a, from a deer, you don't get a big, massive filet. Now, this was once bigger, but I have cut them into one pound sections and we are gonna cook these bad boys up. So we've got ourselves our nice loin here. Try to give you guys some light on it. Um, shed some light on the loin, if you will. 
Um, in fact, there's nothing going on over there. Let's kick you back to the cutting board cam so you can get a better view here. I don't know if that's any better. Let's open up the light. There we go. Now you can see this beautiful loin. So we're gonna do some nice thick cuts. We're gonna, of course, give ourselves a little trim on the end and set him aside. He's gonna be for later. And we're gonna go about, I would say, one to one and a half inch thick cuts. These are gonna shrink down, so we have a nice tenderloin medallion here, right? And we're gonna slice up a few of these, and I think they're gonna taste absolutely wonderful. Um, I just, venison is such a treat in this house. My wife loves it, I love it, the kids hate it, we get to eat more of it. Um, I am taking application for new children because apparently they don't like my cooking. Um, so if you can do dishes, I will happily take you. All right, so we got some good chunks here. This is towards the tail end. And th this is the other thing, you know, when it comes to tenderloin, when you're talking deer, um, you actually get two types of like delicate tenderloin style meats. You get the back straps, which are the tenderloins, right? So that's the spine meat that you get your filet mignons out of, um, like you would out of a, uh, like you would out of cattle. Um, but you also get what's called the inner loins. And the inner loins um, run from kind of like up in the upper hip area down through the back of the thigh. And uh, that ends up being a really nice cut of meat as well. Generally, a lot of hunters will cut those out and they'll end up saving those, and, or not saving those, eating those right away during the season because they're smaller cuts, really tender, really delicious, um, and they want to get on those right away. So. Let's see here. Um, all right, so we've got our tenderloin. We're gonna do our fried onions and mushrooms. We've got our sauce, our medallions. Let's check out our medallions before we really start cooking up because the tenderloin, by the way, this is gonna cook really quick. This is gonna cook super quick. It's gonna be super delicious. But venison, master of splits. Oh, hey, hey, welcome in. Appreciate you joining the show here. Um, so we wanna make sure that when we talk about the tenderloin, the tenderloin is best, especially on a, on a venison, best at medium rare. Anything beyond medium rare, it's gonna get tough, it's gonna get stringy. But if you can keep it at medium rare or less, it ends up being really delicious. Yeah, master of splits, welcome into the stream. Where of course, uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't been a part of this, we do wonderful cooking cooking uh, for Lumberman Cooking, the LMC. Uh, shameless plug to the merch here. It looks great and it will look great on you too. So don't uh, don't hesitate stopping on by. We've got our dedicated Christmas merch coming out. Oh, and UPenn, UPenn, I did this for you. We have a Miss Tiff Puff Hat. Um, I don't know if you want to buy the one that we have out there, but I, I'm thinking about doing a new design that's specific for Miss Tiff and doesn't just say LMC on it, but we have a puff beanie uh, and it's the Miss Tiff Beanie Brigade hat. And uh, she was super pumped to have it, but I think I'm going to change the design. They only do embroidery, so I thought the LMC logo kind of like this would look nice on it. So feel free to get that if you want, but I'm thinking about changing it. I'm down for that. Let me know. All right, I'll let you know. It is up. It's live. I just, I haven't, I'm debating whether or not I want to change it. So I'll let you know. I'll shoot you a message in the Discord. Which reminds me, join the Discord where you see all the final plates. You can see that nice little uh, invite link right there. And Bammy Bam can always throw you a nice Discord. Pop, pop. And uh, we can get you on there. Actually, social. We, thanks to Miss UPenn getting, uh, getting on us. Make sure we got a whole socials brigade out there. So, like I said, we're gonna check on our taters here. Ooh, those are looking pretty. They're not cooking super hard yet, but we're getting some nice crispiness on it already. Bubbling up from the oil. Yeah, hell yeah. Guys, we're, we're humming right along here. So, I think the next thing we really wanna do because like I said, the steaks are gonna cook super quick. Uh, and we do wanna, you know what? Actually, it probably wouldn't hurt to do the steaks real brief. We can do that. We're gonna sear the steaks up. And I think once we're done searing the steaks, we're gonna let them rest. But I'm gonna let them rest in some aluminum foil. Because if we let them let rest in the aluminum foil, they're gonna cook the rest of the way in there. But that gives me an opportunity then to start working on the nice sauce. 
why not make an exotic tartare that was on Hell's Kitchen? Raw venison, raw quail egg, diver's scallops, lime zest, olive oil, capers, caviar, and grated white chocolate. That's not a bad idea. Um, I, I honestly have never tried it. Uh, it sounds delightful. Um, big thing I do have to do, uh, if we want Miss Tiff to have it, she sadly cannot have anything that's raw right now. Um, so even her piece tonight will be a little more overcooked just because of the safety of little baby Lumby. Yes, we have a baby Lumby on the way, made Ramsey puke. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds like a terrible idea just knowing game meat. Like, I can understand doing that with like a, a non-game meat just because there's safety in that. But when you get into wild game meats like I am doing here, um, there's, a, there's always that risk. There's always that risk. But then again, uh, there's always that risk when you undercook any meat. Uh, but I will undercook every meat because that's the way it was intended. Rare to medium rare. Like a man. So we've got our heat reduced. We've got probably a medium heat. We're gonna go ahead and set in some of these chunky chunks here. Um, yeah, actually, I think this will do just fine. I think this will work out really well. I think. I think. I don't know. It may not work out really well. It may be an absolute catastrophe, in which case we'll have a great emote and a wonderful uh, clip to show everybody. One way or another. So I'm getting out some fresh time here. Some fresh time. Mm. So we're gonna get out a few sprigs of that. And we're gonna treat this just like we would any other really nice cut of meat. So we've got that. We're gonna drop in some nice Kerrygold butter. Hi Lumbee, Bika, thank you for joining. Everything is well, family's a lot better. Awesome to see you in here. Hopefully you can stick around for the plating. Thank you for stopping on in, that's awesome of you. You're the best. Um, so we've got ourselves some fresh thyme and we need to break off a chunk of that carry gold. So uh, I want you to know, Yoshi, you are sadly going back. Thank you for joining us. You were a great supervisor in the kitchen. You will go back to your home. Poor Yosh. And we're gonna kick up the stove top now because we're gonna get some things going over there. So we got that stove top cam. And we got that good old Kerrygold butter. Make sure you get that Kerrygold. It's worth the extra $2. I'll tell you right now, that is some good, delectable stuff right there. All right, our 20 minutes are up on the oven. We might as well take a peeky poo while we're at it since we're just before we're starting up here. Oh, that ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. You know what I want to do with those though? They're looking really good. That's some good crisp. They've got some give going. We're going to turn down the heat on that to 375. And we're going to kick the timer back on for another, let's go 10 minutes. They're just starting to soften up. They're getting crispy. They look really good. All in all, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. So I'll take it, I'll take it. So we got that Kerrygold butter, that goodness. If you don't use Kerrygold, you should, all right? Get your life together, get some Kerrygold butter in you. And we're gonna just take a nice big hunk of that. Nice big hunk of Kerrygold. And we're just gonna butter this bad boy up. So we got a nice hunk of Kerrygold butter in there. We're gonna toss in some nice big garlic. Get that going in the flavor. Man, I love that cutting board, or that uh, stove top cam. Doesn't that look good? Getting that garlic infused in the butter. Get our thyme in there. And we're gonna get our tenderloin in there. First tenderloin is in. Let's get them rolling. Second tenderloin is in. Third one is in. Oh my gosh, this is so delicious, guys. It already smells good in here. And we're gonna throw these little scrappy boys over here as well. We're gonna put them right in the center. And then we're gonna do what any good man should do. 
do you get the recipe for uh, Al Capone's walnut sauce? I did, it's saved. I'm gonna try that out. I think I'm gonna try, uh, so, I did get the walnut sauce. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try to make this thing. Um, I'm desperately, I, I honestly, so, Tomorrow is Challenge Saturday, okay? And on Challenge Saturday, we try to do something we've never done before. So I pulled out an extra tenderloin because I'm gonna try Venison Wellington. But uh, you tell me, what do you think? Would a Capone walnut sauce work with a, uh, a Venison Wellington? Is this, is this something you've, uh, you've heard of or tried for? All right, so we're gonna flip our beautiful tenderloins. We've already got some good browning going on. I'm gonna flip this guy as well. Like I said, venison's gonna cook really quick and we do wanna keep it in that rare to medium rare territory. That's, that's key. Oh, that smells so good. And I wanna baste these, but at the same time, I'm not going to yet. It's supposed to be on spaghetti. Really? Really? Now I'm really tempted to try and see if it would work well on something else. I like noodles, don't get me wrong. I took a post-dinner nap, sorry, Lumpy. Nice LMC shirt, my dude. Thank you, thank you. I was hoping you guys would like this. I was hoping you'd like this. I love me some, uh, some LMC. I hope you guys do too. I was hoping you guys would notice some of this good stuff over here. So we're just gonna baste a little more butter on here. Should probably throw a little more in the pan. We need more butter in there. You can never have too much butter. Paula Dean that stuff. Face plan, I'm, by the way, happy you made it. This is gonna be, uh, you came just in, in time. We got all this goodness going on over here. So I'm gonna pull out some of our more done piece, our lesser done, bigger pieces here. We are gonna set this guy aside on the foil. And just to keep that one looking, keep these guys looking tasty and delight, delightful. Cause I don't want them to overcook. And Miss Tiff's section, that's gonna be a little more done, we'll continue to baste up for. Her but we just wanna trap these in and trap that heat in. That'll finish out the cook for those. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. You know what, I'm curious as well. Will that go great on another dish? That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Like if we did the Wellington and then did that uh, walnut sauce right over the top, I think that could be a good pairing. I'm just saying. Tomorrow's challenge night. Let's throw a real challenge at the sun bee. You know what I'm saying? I've never done Wellington in my life. We're gonna do venison Wellington now and let's cover it in that sauce. I think that'd be a good competition on this one. Um, and I know you discovered Kerrygold butter. Happy for that. Time to graduate to the next level, Tillamook butter. See, we're talking about this. We're talking about this and I brought this up earlier too. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I don't know, man, the Kerrygold is so good. I bought three more pounds of it today. I bought three more pounds. And it was, it was such a good time. How can I betray my loyal Irishmans? Try to get some of this good stuff down there. Get in that butter. I'm just basting more butter on here, just trying to get that dairy into the meat. It's gonna help add a lot of good flavor in there. Really good stuff. Tillamook is a life changer. You keep telling me this, I'm, I'm still gonna try it. I'm not gonna say no, but like, this is how I feel about that Kerrygold butter. Like, it's the kind of butter you can literally take a sliver of and just, mmm, yeah. That's salty goodness. That's how you know I'm a fatty. I can use straight butter. No, seriously, if you can't do this with your butter, you're, you're using the wrong butter. Best butter is sold at the worst store. What, Walmart or uh, 
uh, Tarjay. Hmm? Those are still looking really good. This tip said I had to check on my taters. Actually, those are looking nice and good. Oh yeah, I like those. I like those a lot. Those taters are gonna come out really good, guys. Tarjay, I know. I, here's the thing, I don't shop at Tarjay. Um, I don't let Miss Tiff ta stop at shop at Tarjay, and I say, let. I ask that she please doesn't stop at shop at Tarjay, and let me tell you why. Because I know my wife, and if she went to Tarjay, uh, I could immediately just take two crisp $100 bills and slap them on the table. It's gone, poof, light it on fire. Yeah. All right, so we got some good butter going on in there. And I think we're gonna be okay here to get our other pan going. So our other pan, what we're gonna do is we are going to pan sear off these three wonderful slices of onion here. These three wonderful slices, these medallions, are gonna get pan fried in place as they are. And I think I'm gonna do just a dry, um, no butter on it. Maybe we'll throw a little butter in And You know what, this, no, I don't, because I want them seared. I want it nice and hot and I want them seared. Um, but I don't want them, like I almost want them charred from it, is a good way to put it. I don't want them to soften up so much. And that's gonna be the bed of our steak. Oh man. Those pieces look really good. Let's just give a quick taste to one of these. Let me just pull that guy off right there. That's, that's for daddy. That's for daddy. Let's see how we're doing flavor wise. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh, guys, it's so good. If you've never had venison in your life, go outside, kill a deer, take out the back straps and eat them. So good. Um, so Matt and Becky, Chrome, and uh, Becky on Blast, they're streaming right now. If you don't follow them, give them a follow. They're super awesome people. Um, shout out to them. Bam, if you're still here, show them a shout out too. Um, they stream Star Citizen. But th we were talking the other day, they, they are the ones who turned me on to Kerrygold. And Kerrygold butter is super good, but we were talking about venison and the poor souls. Um, I'm gonna shut up and let you do your show. Thank you, Faceplant. Uh, they showed up and they did, uh, or we were talking, and we were talking about, uh, about venison. Were, you know, I told them that I was of course gonna get them some. Um, they're, I won't say quite neighbors of mine, but they're good friends of mine and I know where they live. I can find them. Uh, and uh, told him I'd give him some venison. And Becky's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Like, that's your good stuff. We can just go buy some. I looked at her, I was like, buy some? Where are you buying venison? So in the state of Wisconsin, just so you know, you can buy venison, but it has to be farm raised. It's like buying steak. And it defeats the purpose because a farm raised venison steak might as well just be a regular steak. But you can't buy game venison. So if you go into a store and you see someone who's just like, at least if you're in Wisconsin, you can't buy wild game meats. It has to be farmed meats. That's just the way Wisconsin works. I don't make the rules. I merely abide by them. So we have got our taters. You can see we have some nice burning that was done towards the seasoning. But all in all, they turned out absolutely wonderful with color. And we're gonna be able to hand pick a few of these. I'm just checking all the backsides of these bad boys as well. I'm gonna give one of these a tasty too, just to make sure they're, you know, edible for human consumption. We're gonna give one of these a flipping poo as well. Gene, <laughs> I got Target only to make fun of those who go, <laughs> I go to Target only to make fun of those who only go to Target for butter. Much love to you, Gene. <laughs> All right, and this is the way Miss Tip likes them. Nice and charred up. She's got hers, I've got mine. I don't know why she eats hockey pucks, but God bless her for doing stuff. At least she eats meat. Guys, this is gonna come together so well. 
stop working again. Bye, dream. All right, so our timers are off. And we're almost gonna be ready to start making up our sauce here soon. How are we doing on heat back here? We're gonna crank you up a little bit more. Like I said, I want that guy searing hot. We're gonna end up throwing and uh, some really good stuff in there. Chopped garlic, olive oil, Italian parsley, red chili flakes, salt, pepper, and chopped walnuts. Let's see you make that sauce tomorrow. I'm in. I think I actually have all those ingredients. I got chopped olive oil, I've got Italian parsley, I'll have to pick up. Red chili flakes, I got salt and pepper, I got. I'll have to pick up some chopped walnuts or some regular walnuts. I'll chop them myself. I chop nuts. Master of splits, I'm in. I'm in. We're gonna do a beef well we're gonna do a venison wellington. In fact, I've got a venison loin out, but I'm gonna get a nice round one. That's the one. This, this is the loin we are looking for. So we're gonna pull out Miss Tiff's wonderful steaks. We're just gonna place those right here. Those are for her tasting pleasure. And then we are going to get out these big hunkers out of here and put them in the trash can. Because we're gonna incorporate a whole bunch of new flavor in here. In fact, we're just gonna get fresh new butter in there too. I want those charry bits, but I don't want that butter. The butter is getting too browned. All right, so let's get some fresh butter up in that bee. That fresh carry gold. And then we're gonna drop in right away with some uh, mushroom and some onion and get this sauce rolling. It's gonna be a good sauce. Parmesan cheese, will that go well on venison wellington? I don't know why it wouldn't, right? So venison wellington, right? I've never made a wellington. I just know it's beef, it's butter, it's mushrooms. It is a bread of sorts, so why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it go well on it, in my humble opinion? To me, it just makes sense. So now we're gonna jump in. We've got minced onion and minced mushroom that we're gonna be dropping in over here. And we're gonna let that just soak up that butter and we're gonna let it saute up. We're gonna get a nice bit of flavor out of that along with the rest of the goodies that are all up already in that pan. Get out our nice wooden spatula. I love me a good wooden spatula, it's so good. So if you don't have a wooden spatula, you should. Okay, it's good for scraping, but it's also good for non-stick pans that don't scratch too well. So we're gonna stir these guys up and get all those nice steak bits that stuck in here as well scooped up and just incorporate that all into this. And we're gonna let that cook down. That onion's gonna sweeten up for us, which is gonna be really delicious. There we go. Also, I forgot to uh, mention, I made some beef bouillon some cheap beef bouillon because cubes are still accessible in this house, so I use cubes. And I know that's a boo-boo, you don't wanna use cubes all the time, but I did. All right, so we're gonna use some beef bouillon cubes that made us a little bit of beef broth, and we're gonna use that to help uh, reduce down with our red wine and our pomegranate sauce. Just adding some more savoriness to all of this, I think it's gonna be great. Master of Splits is now following the kitchen. Thank you, Master of Splits. I appreciate you joining the kitchen here. Really? She's in on this too? This must this must be a conspiracy. It's a Tillamook it's a Tillamook conspiracy. I'm gonna take this to the to Matt and Becky as well, and they're gonna they're gonna sit there and yell at me too. They're gonna be like, dude, there's no way. There's no way it's as good. Alright. So we've got some good absorption going on. I always do this to the camera too. I make you see my back instead of this. You can see we've got some good reduction going in there. We're gonna let those continue to simmer up. That butter is absorbing quick into all that good stuff. But we're gonna let it keep doing its thing. We've got a nice hot searing pan over here, super hot. 
Oh yeah, that's super hot. That boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 super hot. And we just want to do, get these medallions in there and just let them char. Ooh, you know it's hot when steam's poking up at you. This is looking really good though, guys. I'm thinking this is gonna turn out to be one of our better dishes we've done on a fancy Friday. I think it's gonna plate beautifully too. I actually sat and thought out the plating on this one, which is why we've got so much going on here as far as different um, looks and pieces and parts. I sat down and I was like, I want this thing to look so good on a plate. So I'm hoping the plating turns out really well. You'll find out once you taste it. That's fine. That's fine. I'm here. To, I'm here to try new things. I'm not going to say it's the best until I've uh, I've tasted the best, and then I'll live with the rest. And actually, we could probably swip swap these, but eh, they're doing fine the way they are. Kick your heat back up, and all of that. I almost wish I had a weight for these things. Ah. <laughs> My onions are farting at me because of all the steam coming out of them. These look so awesome. Just a nice hard sear on those. So plate wise, plate wise, all right? We're gonna go with the old square plate today. That's gonna be our plate of choice. Our onions are nice and caramelizing. Square plate of doom. Square plate Odoom. So now that we've got a good caramelization, we are gonna dump in our palms. Get those nice pomegranates on in there. I'm so excited about these. Mm, 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 mm. Slap chop, you get out of here with your damn slap chop. Not in this kitchen. All right, so we've got our pomegranates now added in. We're gonna let those mingle with the party that's going on in this pan. And this guy can now join the sink. <laughs> Damn, I thought. How about Jimmy Carter's peanut soup? You know, you've got some interesting takes on this, Master of Master of Splits. Oh, Master. Uh, no, I've never uh, never had Jimmy Carter's peanut soup, but that sounds interesting too. I'm not opposed to it either. That sounds delightful. All right, so our onions, our onions are good and ready. So first things first, let's get this guy There we go, they're all freed up. Oh no. Oh no. That's fine, we got that guy there. And we're gonna put you right there. So our plating has started, it is commencing. Ronald Reagan's mac and cheese. I feel like you're just throwing, a, I feel like you're just throwing presidents now in here. George Bush, 
You, oh, that's right, Master of Splits. You have all of this like knowledge of food. It's like a history food. I remember this now. Yeah, you've got all these like kind of quirky recipes because of this. And yes, I would be very interested because I'm always looking. Listen, the hardest part of this stream is not actually the cooking part, it's deciding what to cook. Like once I get in the go, the the actual, uh, the actual, uh, you know, like the content writes itself after a while. Um, we're just gonna start to kind of mash this a little bit too to free up some of these juices that are in here, some of that sweetness. as this is all frying up. But yeah, I, if I remember right, you, you have like a history, a, a love of history of this stuff. No, these are your favorite dishes. No, I know they are, but I, if I recall right, like you, you had like a deep understanding and like you're into the history of foods and like the history of people and their favorite foods. If I recall right, that was your shtick, if you will. All right, we can reduce this heat down. That's gonna be way too hot to throw some butter in for the rest of this. Um, Cause we still gotta cook up some of this good stuff. Now those mushrooms are actually gonna cook in the sauce once we get it going. So the carrots and the asparagus are what's gonna go into that wonderful searing pan. Um, all right, and we've got pomegranates doing their work. They're starting to soften down themselves a little bit. Like I said, I'm just gonna kind of give some light mashing in here just to help break open those juices. It's like I, these pomegranates are gonna add some nice tart and some sweet to all of this. The onions are of course gonna sweeten up as well as they continue to cook. We got some good butter in there. That's a good time. We got a little party going on up in this thing. Now, the other part of this party that we didn't talk about, or that we had mentioned, but we didn't really talk about, Master's particular over. Over. We've got some dark chocolate. So we're gonna make this a dark chocolate sauce. Mm. I do love me some dark chocolate. Deng Xiaoping's uh, Double Taste Fiery Pot. Ooh, ouvre. Okay. Okay. Mmm. So we got some Ghirardelli dark chocolate over here. Some wafers. We're gonna actually, we're gonna throw that through the grater real quick and just find it up so it, it doesn't burn. It's gonna end up mixing in really well. But we're actually gonna do that um, after we get the wine and our uh, beef in there, our beef base. All right. Ah, get on back here, little guy. Oh yeah, that's already starting to get some of that tart in there. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. How's our pan feeling? Still a little warm, but that's good enough. Let's get some butter in there. And let's get some of that good old, good old in there. Thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight, by the way. Really appreciate it. You've been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stream to deal with today, as always. We've got just some final wrapping up to do. And I'm really excited that I got to talk about venison today. Um, sorry if you missed out on it. We had a wonderful conversation to start the day and a whole lot of stuff. Uh, one of, here you go. Give me chocolate, please. I'm craving it. Oh man. Uh, Abe Lincoln's uh, chicken fricasse. I would love to give you some chocolate. Come on over, you can have some chocolate. <laughs> Where you at, Grater? Mm, there you are. All right, let's get some of that garlic up in there. Like I said, we're not gonna do anything super, super special. 
We're just gonna get some garlic. For our, our asparagus and our carrots here, we're just gonna do some garlic, some salt, and some pepper. Keep it real basic, keep it really delicious, but really simple. And we're gonna just drop these guys right in there with it. Let them just start cooking up. This is gonna be, add some really good color to the plate for us, which I'm excited about too. You know, I've been trying to diversify our plating and add more color. Um, even our fit last fancy uh, Friday night turned out a little bit bland on the plate. A little bit bland. Stupid nap, I missed it. Start over, chef. Um, well, there's a lot to cover. Uh, I think uh, uh, UPenn had to hear most of it, um, and so did Bam. Uh, thank you guys for listening to my droning. But we basically, we talked about uh, how venison works and um, some fun facts about it, like hunting season here in Wisconsin and how it comes together. Richard Nixon's meatloaf. Richard Nixon loved his wife's meatloaf. It would be served in the White House once a month. Interesting. I did not know that. But yeah, we talked about how the seasons work here, how it's interesting. Uh, we talked about the conservation ship of the animal and why we have so many hunting seasons and the lack of natural predators. There was a lot, there was a lot to go through. All right, so I think our, our palms have definitely reduced down, softened their shells. We've got some soft flavors mixing in. We've got the mushrooms and everything softening up. So let's get our red wine in there. So we've got, of course, just like la the last time, our Chop House Cabernet Sauvignon. Nothing special, it's a 2018, but it is a delicious California red wine. Let's see if I have to get out the old corkscrew again or if I can wiggle this bad boy out. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <whistles> We're gonna need the corkscrew, by the way. But yeah, we talked about the conservation ship of the, uh, of, uh, deer and how that worked but yeah um here in wisconsin i guess a uh, fun fact for you um in wisconsin we have multiple deer, deer seasons we have uh, it starts out with an archery season which runs uh through the rut um we also do uh that's right next to the slap shop you hush um runs right through the rut then you have uh the youth hunt which starts a week before thanksgiving then you have uh, and is a rifle hunt uh you then have rifle season which is through thanksgiving the entire week of thanksgiving uh till that sunday from the previous saturday uh from yeah the saturday before thanksgiving to the sunday afterwards then you have uh a um after that is a uh Oh gosh, why am I having a problem here? Uh, you have muzzle loader season. And after muzzle loader season, you go back to another archery season, which runs through December. All right, so we've added our beef broth. We're gonna kick up the heat here to a nice boil. And we are also gonna add, ooh. This vanilla, dark fruits, baking spices, and notes of tobacco leaf. But the flavors, the flavors are where it's important. You have bold, elegant, rich plum, dark cherries and blueberries. Sounds delightful. Sounds delightful. So we've got our heat kicked up up on here. We're at an eight. We're also going to, I'm gonna let that get going a little bit before I add the wine in. But we are gonna give this a nice stir. I want this to all reduce down. So I don't want a ton going on there. Um, let's get our our tongies out. Oh yeah, our asparagus has a little browning going on on it. I like that a lot, lot a lot. Our julienne cut carrots look wonderful. And those aren't gonna take much longer at all. And I still want those to be a little firm. The carrots don't need to be anything crazy. And the asparagus. Now let's just continue to do its thing. There 
there we go. We got a nice rolling, simmering going on over here. Oh, that smells delightful. Now let's get some of that red wine up in there. Red, red wine. All right. We can recork that back up. I'm from Illinois. I haven't killed a thing, but I love all he killed. I love all the killed things. Well, actually, you know, uh, so all of my relatives that come up and hunt with me are from Illinois. They're from the Rockford, um, not Rockford, Rochelle. They're from the Rochelle and uh, China, Illinois? China? China, Illinois. Um, so, you know, Northwest Illinois, um, North Central. Um, but yeah, they come up for the week. We do hunting and uh, it, like I said, we had a great harvest this year. Um, so I managed to come home with nine pounds of venison tenderloins, um, which is clutch in this house. Um, apparently they do not like uh, the tenderloin themselves. They much prefer the sausage. So they take their share, so to speak, and they send it in for sausage. And I was like, whoa, 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 before you start throwing sausage, before you start throwing like tenderloin first and four off, foremost, but then also like your steak meats in, like I will swap you the steak meats for your all your tenderloins. So like I'll do the exchange like pound for pound. Here's like my my shoulder cuts and whatnot. You give me the tenderloins in return. You can throw more shoulder meat into that batch. I don't don't be throwing that stuff in there. What the hell's wrong with you? That's good cuts of meat right there. Jiminy crickets. All right, we're doing really good here as far as timing and everything. We do need to drop our mushrooms into our sauce and start letting those cook up as well. Let that absorb up all those good flavors. And we should be able to get a couple good mushrooms out of that as well. So those are just going and we need to get our chocolate grade going on here. And last but not least, we need to make our sauce for our potatoes. So we're just gonna go ahead and grade us up some dark chocolate. I probably should have done this with a shredder shredder should have done this with the uh it's so fine it's gonna melt instantly though oh i can't help myself top of the food chain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you gotta know it best part about being human i get to eat everything else <laughs> and it's not weird if you were a bear that ate a human you get shot but if you're human that ate a bear you shot it just saying most times hopefully um, so I need to get a better, uh, I grabbed this out and I had a, <sighs> pardon me for the sneeze. Um, I had this wonderful cheese grater here that I could have used that would work much more effectively and make a much bigger mess. Yes, make a much bigger mess. By the way, if you haven't noticed yet, I have my wonderful LMC gear. Uh, it'd be good of you to stop on over by the store, the LMC shop, if you will. Lumberman cooking. Uh, best part of cooking for the family is you can lick your fingers on stream. I know, don't even judge me here, all right? Don't even judge me. I realized I just did that too. I've been trying so hard to make sure that I always take for, you know, uh, and do proper food techniques. Tomorrow I won't be able to do this though. I may have a visitor coming in to try out some food as we're doing the challenge day. Uh, he called me up today and he's like, hey, I'm gonna be down by you. I don't wanna interrupt the stream, but if I'm uh, down there, like before the stream starts, I'm like, no, come on in, you know? Hang out, be a part of it. So, why not? <sighs> Man, we got some good smells coming up in here, guys. Like I was saying, though, if you have an opportunity, go stop over by the old streams, uh, by the <sighs> Lumberman Cooking Store, uh, the Lumberman Kitchen, if you will. And uh, in the kitchen, we have ourselves some goodies, included but not limited to a Miss Tiff Palm Beanie, so you can be a part of the Miss Tiff Beanie Brigade. 
It's got the good palm top just in time for these cold winter months coming upon us. Uh, also, you can get your new limited edition, 30 days only, uh, holiday sweater. It's an ugly sweater that you will not want to not miss out on. Um, it is the in memoriam of the floors of fries. Fries on floors laughing. It is uh, sad fries under a tree. Um, it really is an awesome, awesome design. Um, I get to flex my other muscles as a graphic design artist by doing some of this stuff. Feel free to check it out. It's a great time. I highly, highly recommend it. Tiff drugged them. Wait, where's the boys noise? Yeah, yeah, she totally drugged them. Actually, uh, they passed out. Uh, They're still getting over their sickness, which has been, of course, uh, ran its course through this house pretty darn well. You can hear I'm still sniffling and sneezing. Um, I've been neti potting uh, twice a day now for the last three days and I felt a ton better but I still got a little bit lingering on up there. Um, the boys got hit pretty hard with it though. Um, but yeah, uh, oldest boy's been sleeping since about 7.30 and youngest boy went down at six. So they're doing really good now. And I love it. We're letting this wine sauce continuing to reduce. And I think we can actually move on to some of our next plating steps here soon. Our mushrooms are starting to soften up. We still have our chocolate sauce. We want to continue to build out here. I'm going to go a few more wafers here. I'm thinking we want to hit, you know, right now we've got uh, a little bit of chocolate going on there. Um, we've got beautiful, decadent Ghirardelli's dark chocolate. Um, God, I love this stuff. I'm probably going to end up eating this bag tonight after I'm done with the stream because I just love dark chocolate. You know, shoot me if you if you disagree with me. Um, but uh, I really, really, really love Hershey Special Dark. I know it's probably hot garbage. I know it's probably terrible for you. But that Hershey Special Dark, man, there's just something about it. Um, oh my, bang, oh wait. Um, so I also uh, would say that, uh, bam, at full strength, Chef uses best chocolate, not under, but not best butter. Watch yourself on the butter, buddy. All right, watch yourself on the butter. That Kerrygold is good stuff. That dark chocolate was healthiest. I thought so too. Um, and I know that it's supposed to be. Um, so we had a person at work, they went to Sweden just on a whim uh, for their husband's, uh, it was on his bucket list. I think it was his birthday or something like that. So they took him to Switzerland, Switzerland. And they picked up some stark chocolate while they were there. Oh, thank you. Oh, rated with six? Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. Eiko Japanese girl, appreciate you uh, raiding the stream. Oh, uh, get some. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fish pickles, hello. Abdeel Beast, welcome to the stream. We appreciate you joining on in. Welcome to Lumberman Cooking. We appreciate you. Hi, Aiko, how was, how was your stream? How did everything go? Welcome to Lumberman Cooking. I am, uh, I'm Lumby. Uh, you can refer to me as Lumby, Denny, whatever you'd like. We're cooking tonight some beautiful, beautiful food, so I hope you stick around. Um, Bam put up the menu for us. Um, this is just a wonderful cooking channel. Fish Pickles, thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. Um, we're making some delightful food here tonight. We've got venison uh, tenderloins that we're doing up. Abdeel Beast, thank you so much. What are they preparing? I cook scrambled eggs. What are you cooking? Oh, that scrambled eggs sounds so good. Um, so we are doing venison tenderloin with a... Uh, chocolate pomegranate so uh, wine sauce with mushrooms and a bed of onion. And then we are also doing uh, fried potatoes uh, with a uh, uh, asparagus and carrots and a uh, tangy horseradish sauce. You'll wanna stick around, this is gonna be some really good stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining in and following us. Um, this is always a blast. So yeah, we're just wrapping up some of the good stuff here. Um, we're waiting for the final sauce. We're actually getting a really good reduction out of this. In fact, probably add just a touch more beef broth into that just to give some more depth, the last of it. 
because we're here rounding out to the final parts of that and we want to get our chocolate melted in. So yeah, this is a chocolate pomegranate wine sauce that we're making that should really work out well with the rest of the plate. So now that our mushrooms are done, we're going to take those out of the sauce because we don't want to overcook those. And of course, get all the pomegranates out of it because we want those to drain out. Oopa. I'll get out of the way of that camera there for you guys too so you can see what's going on in this thing. Our venison's already cooked. We actually, we let it finish cooking inside the aluminum foil. That way it could stay warm and finalize. And then of course, Miss Tiff, my wonderful sweet wife, uh, she has to have some uh, fully cooked stuff because uh, she is pregnant with little lady Lumby. So, you know, gotta have that fully cooked food when we get the opportunity. Sounds, that sounds delicious, good combination. Thank you, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Have re oh, look, hold on, hold on, we gotta go get her. Miss Tiff, you have been beckoned. Oh, she, <laughs> she said, oh, good, she's coming. Yeah. Yeah, I summoned thee, bam, summoned thee. Um, so Miss Tiff has arrived. Say hello, Miss Tiff. Actually, let me hit that main cam for you so you can say hi to the wonderful people. Hello. So welcome to my wonderful kitchen. Um, we have, of course, three cameras set up for you guys. You have my wonderful one cutting board cam in front of me. You've got my upper cam here to cover my stove top and you have my main camera here that goes right into my wonderful wife. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining so much. Love you, Tiff. All right, so we got our sauce has reduced one more time and we're gonna throw in some more red wine into this bad boy just to hit the final parts. Oh, Miss Tiff has got to do her patented find more food while I'm here dance. Go ahead, find your food. Would you like a steak bit? Oh, I just did. Oh, I just, <laughs> of course she did. Oh, she's sniffing. Is that Lady Lumby? <laughs> Is it a Lady Lumby? Yeah, it's a Lady Lumby. Yeah, we found out. We've got a little Lady Lumby on the way. And actually, guys, like I said, I, uh, I'm in talks. I'm trying to get a, uh, I'm gonna try and get myself a new knife commissioned. So here's my thoughts. If you guys want your chance at my Japanese stainless steel cleaver, um, I might be retiring it if I can get a new one commissioned out. And if I can get the new one commissioned out, what I would like to do is I would like to do a giveaway because I'm gonna get a new cutting board with it. And uh, I would like to maybe give away the original Lumby uh, cutting board and Japanese steel cleaver. We'll of course get it sharpened up by the original chef. And uh, maybe we'll do a giveaway to the person who can correctly guess the due date of Little Lady Lumby. Um, and I'm talking like, this is gonna be the baby pool, right? Like the winner of the baby pool gets this goodness. All right, so we've got a good puree going here. I am gonna turn down the heat a little bit. And Mama Bear, if you wanna go ahead and hit us over to the uh, stove top cam, yep, go ahead and hit that one. There we go. So we've got it really reduced down. We're gonna add in just a touch more white wine, or red wine here, and get that done. Finally took the stem off the apple. Finally took the stem of the apple. What? Collector's items. Hold on, I'm so lost. Where did, what did I miss? Oh, Lumby, what does the wine do? I don't know, I don't know. So the wine is gonna add us some nice flavor and richness is what that's gonna do. So our wine is gonna go through, we're gonna add that in one more time. That's gonna help uh, make all that flavor come together. We're gonna add in our chocolate now. And that should thicken up our sauce a little bit. And we wanna pay a little more attention to the sauce now that that's going. And we wanna get that all stirred in. So this is gonna make our chocolate sauce for us. Oh, that smells rich. This. He said I saw it on TV once. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. The wine does what the wine does. No, so wine, what it really does for you is it adds a richness, um, but it also helps break up. It adds, what's the best way of putting it? It carries the richness of a dish out, but it also helps take the heaviness out of it. So like if you add wine to a cream sauce, you help maintain a lot of the flavor that the cream sauce already has, um, but you take away some of the heaviness that comes with the dairy of that and helps extend that out. So that's why you use wine in a sauce. It helps bring in some richness without taking, without adding heaviness into it. So now that we got that all done, we are gonna take out our strainer and we are going to strain this bad boy into a bowl because we have got this sauce all but done. So let's do, Miss Tiff, I need your assistance, please. I'm going, I'm going full special mode over here. Boom, booyah kasha. Guys, you're gonna wanna stick around. We're actually getting right up to the plating point here. So let's go ahead and empty our sauce in. Oh yeah. That smells delightful. And we're just gonna press in all of that and get all that good flavor out. That's gonna be a really solid sauce. And all I'm doing right now is just pressing in all this mash. I suppose I could do this over here. So now we've got our chocolate wine sauce. Um, and it's really just doing its thing. It's gonna, Get all that pomegranate out of there, all that good juice. And the chocolate's all mixed in. That is a very, very delicious looking sauce. I am excited for it. And you should be too. Ooh, YYY is now following. Welcome to the kitchen, appreciate it. Ooh, so hope. All right. Well, our carrots got a little extra crispy. You'll have that, especially on your bigger jobs. Don't worry, your asparagus is fine. Miss Tiff loves her asparagus, and I definitely overcooked some of it, but that's okay. So we're gonna head back to the cutting board in the main camera here, and we are gonna continue on our plating journey. So let's go ahead and get to the plating. All right. So for our fancy plate here, we're gonna get this all rolling up. Guys, I do wanna take an opportunity to say thank you all. This has been so far a wonderful stream. We definitely had a hiccup and uh, the asparagus is a little toasty, but you know what, we're gonna hide that a little bit. And I still gotta make a sauce here. Jiminy, Jiminy, crickets, Batman. So this is my all time favorite sauce, guys. I want you to know that. Um, we're gonna whip it up real quick and I think you guys are gonna love this. You're gonna wanna take this recipe with you. Um, by far my favorite of all time. So this recipe is something I learned when I managed our kitchen up in Northern Wisconsin. And this recipe is really simple to make and goes really well with anything savory. So first things first, sour cream. Um, you're gonna need sour cream, you're gonna need horseradish, you're gonna need lemon juice, and you're gonna need dill seasoning. And if you don't have sour cream, you can always use cottage cheese as well. Miss Tiff is telling me my sour cream is buried in the bottom back. Oh, let's hope so. Otherwise, we got cottage cheese we can always use. So I'm not worried about it. Oh, there it is. We do have sour cream. I'm just blind as a bat. You know what? Screw it, we're doing both. We're gonna do both, I want some chunks. So, buttons on your underwear. We are gonna take, and we're gonna go, usually you'd go one part sour cream, one part dill, uh, one part horseradish, half part uh, lemon juice. But we are gonna go, uh, let's go with a spoonful of cottage cheese. We're gonna go a spoonful of, uh, two spoonfuls of sour cream, just to help thin that out a little bit. And 
And let's do, oh gosh, buttons on your what? So buttons on your underwear, bowl placement. Oh yeah, thank you for the reminder. I could learn to be a better, better person here for the camera angles. So we're gonna go with a little bit of lemon juice. Um, that should do. You can see it doesn't look super impressive right now. That's fine. Tastes phenomenal. I just threw up. <laughs> Add some ketchup to the cottage cheese and you got Richard Nixon's favorite. Oh my gosh, really? No wonder people hated him as a president. Other than the fact that he was a sh like a crook, they're looking at him like, that man doesn't know how to eat real food. We're gonna take a big helping spoonful. And so this is a recipe you wanna, like I said, play around with on your own, um, cause you're gonna find there's different flavors that all play together here that you're gonna like different combinations of. I like a nice, good spoonful of horseradish in there. I like the spice. And then I want my dill seasoning, which is somewhere in here. Oh, dill, dill. I have a whole thing of it. I just bought a whole new thing. And here I am just digging around like, I don't know what's in my kitchen. I know where everything is in my kitchen. See, it's right there. I told you it was right there the whole time and we're gonna sprinkle that in. So this is gonna make a really unique flavored sauce. It's gonna have the heat from the horseradish, gonna have the kick from the, the kind of soury from the dill that carries in with the lemon juice. Um, it's really a unique dipping sauce. And this will work really well with steak. It works really good with potatoes, anything savory. And you can see as it works together here, it actually builds a really, really nice sauce. And we're gonna give it a little tasty test. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. That slaps. It's a little, I think maybe a hair too much lemon juice, which is okay. We can kick that back with a little bit, as I drop my tongs, a little bit more sour cream. That'll help thicken it up. Like I said, this is a recipe you're gonna play with. Um, it's super simple to make though, and it goes with anything uh, savory, anything savory. Um, really pairs well with it. If you want pork chops, chicken, um, if, it's got, if it's got some depth of flavor to it, this sauce will work for it, I promise you. Really will, it's so delicious. All right. Work that in a little bit more. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, now for our plating measures. All right, we're gonna throw that up there. Like I said, guys, if you have the opportunity, get on the Discord, get on uh, Instagram, um, get on Twitter, Reddit, we've got it all. And that's where we do all of our best plating shots. All right, so we've got our onion already laid out. And this is how I envision this. Now these steaks are cooked rare to my liking. It's also venison that makes it the most tender when you do a rare cut. So we're gonna stack our plate really nicely here. We got some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mm, flavor and smells coming out of that. And of course we need to make sure we keep our plate clean as we go. What do we think this is, amateur hour? All right, now that we got those guys out of the way, let's get some beautiful mushrooms on this plate. All right.
right, so these are these pomegranate and wine soaked mushrooms. We're just gonna put these right on the side here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Those look just delightful. Oh, come on guy, get on in there. Meddle in with your brothers. I hope you guys love this stuff here too. This has been really fun for me. Um, once again, super shout out to Bam. Uh, Super shout out to Becky on Blast and Chrome SDK who have helped me put all this stuff together. Big shout out to you, Babo. Appreciate you always stopping in. You, Penn, being active in the chat here, I always appreciate that as well. You guys are always phenomenal and always help keep the stream going. It's so much easier when you guys are in here. And I know I'm not just being crazy and talking to myself. Um, and we're going to keep on cleaning up here as we go. I want this plate to turn out really beautiful here. And I think it's going to, I really do. Oh, that chocolate wine sauce just smells amazing. And I gotta give a taste to one of these mushrooms. Oh, gosh, so good. You, Penn, you know you deserve it. You guys give great feedback for the stream, help keep it going, help keep me and Bammy on my toes. All right, so let's pick out some of our beautiful potato medallions. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I think actually we should do a little flare of that. For a nice ladder effect, what do you guys think? A little laddering? Almost like it's a bouquet. And actually we'll do it just like that. And we'll put our sauce back here. So this is that cottage cheese, sour cream, horseradish, dill, and lemon. It's gonna go really great with the potato. Okay. And that plate's looking really awesome. Scoop you away. We're almost done here, guys. We'll be ready to taste test it any second here. I still have people I wanna introduce you to, chef. Oh, do you now? Do you now, Bobby? I'd love to meet more people actually. This has been such a fun community to get involved with. Um, it's super supportive, super awesome. Awesome, thanks for the raid tonight too. Um, that was super phenomenal. You guys are always, a, like this community is such a hoot. Yeah, don't miss the opportunity to join in on this community. I know we've got the Discord as well. So please don't, don't miss out on joining the Discord. All right. And then our asparagus, our crunchy asparagus, which we're gonna just put right like such. We'll just take a couple of these nice chunks of carrot that are We'll just say caramelized, that's the word, right? Caramelized carrots. All right, and last but certainly not least, the sauce. The sauce is gonna be really good. In fact, Miss Jeff, why don't you hit that tasting cam as it's put on there? Oh yeah, now you guys can see that, that goody. As we go ahead and hit this with some sauce too. So we got our chocolate wine sauce, tasting time, <laughs> plenty of time to meet new people. I do, huge community, you're overdue meeting them. I'm, bring them on in, man, bring me on in. All right, let's get a nice, Look at that. 
Can we do one for the mushrooms, one for the steak, and two for the shrooms? So this is that pomegranate chocolate sauce that we worked so hard on tonight. And that just looks amazing. All right, let's get those pictures done and get Miss Tiff tasting. The lumber woman has made an entrance. She sends her love. Damn right she has. All right, Miss Tiff, you, you swing on in here if you want. Actually, she doesn't want to anymore because, um, well, she will, should I say. She doesn't come in early anymore because she's like, you always want to take pictures of the food and then I'm always stuck in the background. I'm like, yeah, it's the best part. Oh gosh, guys, you're not gonna wanna miss this plate when it gets onto, gets onto the, uh, the Discord. This just looks so good. Let me get one regular shot here and we're ready to go. Miss Tiff, come on in. Come on in. <coughs> now, of course, I've got... <coughs> Sorry, sorry guys, I'm coughing. Uh, huh? You sound like a mess. I am a mess, you know this. Miss Tiff, here is this, and I've provided you a dipping sauce in here if you'd oh. like to try. You will not want to yeah. try those, but you can try the mushroom. I don't think I'm going to try the mushroom today. You don't, you're not feeling the mushroom today? Okay, that's fine. Miss Tiff has been on the more sweet side lately as far as cravings go. I want to try this. <laughs> nice crunchy asparagus that I made you. <laughs> just pick it up, just go after it. <laughs> Packing up this kitchen to party. Oh, hey, that's delicious though. So. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good, just okay. Just ate it all. <laughs> just ate it all. Okay. Just going after a tater? Yep. I think you like those. Good texture? Mm-hmm. Solid texture. We're winning this so battle. What's this? this is the horsey sauce. I think you'll like it. Take a dip. Light dip. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to go crazy, just give yourself a little flavor punch. That's actually not bad. I know it isn't. That's what you said last time too. <laughs> last time she had it. It's not that bad. No, I know it isn't. I know what I'm doing. Daddy knows what's good. Mm, nom nom nom. Okay, try that in the sauce though. Not my favorite thing. Not your favorite. Okay, that's nope. fine. All right. Well, time for me to hop in. Let's take a let's take a gander at this. Let's take a gander. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go after a mushroom first. Okay, these mushrooms look phenomenal without the with the sauce on them. Mmm. Okay, I really like this pomegranate chocolate sauce. I really do. Um, I am gonna go ahead and open up a chunk of steak for you guys so you can see this wonderful rare goodness the way I like it. I'm gonna get one of them, them old fashions. Because otherwise I could just eat these by the... Oh yeah, so I like mine rare. You can see that I've got a good rare on here. Solid rare. Solid rare. That's the way it's done, okay? Mm. Oh my gosh. So guys, I know a lot of people will, will yell at you if you go rare, they're like, that's just not good for you. When it comes to venison, rare is the way to go because it keeps everything super, super, super tender. Okay. And the tenderness, mm. I don't need a knife to cut this, I don't. I don't. Um, okay, maybe a little bit of one, but for the most part, this is like melting in my mouth. Like, it's such an easy chew. Like, I say I don't need a knife because a couple strokes with the fork and it's done. Like, it really is. Okay, the flavors, right? The sweetness of the chocolate is in there. There's a, it adds a richness with the wine. 
that really plays well with the gaminess that is venison, right? So venison naturally a gamey meat. They really come together. Lumber has been beaten with his own dinner. <laughs> I know. Um, so this is really like, it, I'm actually really impressed with how well this plays together. And then the, the tartness, the tartness from the pomegranate, it almost elevates the gaminess. It's really a weird combination. I've never tasted anything like this before and it's so good. Highly recommend it, highly recommend it. Of course, I've got to grab one of these charred onions because I'm a glutton for punishment. Oh my gosh, yes, I love onion. All right, let me get one of these crunchy asparagus. I'm not angry by it. I'm really not. It's really good. All right, let's take a tater down with this wonderful sauce. Mmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, there is such a variety of textures. Like the meat is very, like, like I said, it's rare, so it's super soft, it's melty, it's really great. Um, hot cuisine in, in Wisconsin. I, you are prying at my memory banks, all right? And by memory banks, I mean brain cells, hot. Come on, no, I'm not that refined. Um, the, the crunch from the veggies is actually fun for me because it's got a really good flavor. The char actually does well with it. And the garlic's in there, the buttery goodness, it's salty, it's delightful. So good. It's French, okay. No parlez-vous, or un parlez-vous français? Oh my gosh, yeah, there's crunch in there. Even the potatoes have a good like crunch, but they're soft on the inside. And then the sauce. Guys, this is easily one of my favorite meals I've ever made. On so many levels. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna F around and find out. Let's try a little tater with the chocolate sauce. Mm. Yes, fantastic cuisine. Guys, this is a, if I had to rate this one, this is a solid like 9.2 out of 10 as far as meals I've ever made myself and Miss Tiff um, easily. My mushrooms are firm yet chewy. Such a good flavor, the wine really comes through on it. Super job, super fantastic job. Miss Tiff, hit that main cam for me, that MC. Um, guys, I super appreciate you guys coming on in. Um, let's hit a raid real quick. Bam, are you still around? Do you think we can hit a raid? Um, actually, let's see, let's see who's online real quick. Um, let me give you a raid. Uh, Lumpin' Laura. Oh, well, it looks like we're hitting Lumpin' Laura, Lumpling Laura with six Raiders. Um, Bam had one queued up for us, but uh, Faceplant, we will definitely hit up a date night in at one of these. Um, super appreciate you guys so much. I really do. Um, as always, Miss Tiff loves you guys. If you have an opportunity, go pick yourself up some merch from the merch store. We got some awesome new shirts in. Um, we have the, as she's tripping over my size 14 and a half wide boats that are on my feet. Um,